And we are live Wednesday night with those guys. And Wednesday night with those guys is sponsored by those guys. guys. What's up? What's good? What's up? You. Happy hump day. Hit 45 here today, here? Michigan. 45 degrees. That's what's okay, up. That's it nice. Actually, you know what? That's nice it was, for supposed, weather. To, it was supposed to hit 52 here, drone shots mm -hmm. in New York. And to be honest, I don't think it. Oh, hold but, on. it's 52 right there. Okay. 52 degrees right it's now. It's a real feel. I'm doing a live stream. I was supposed to go flying this morning and I didn't because okay. it was a wee bit nippy. All right. All right. <laughs> No, when I say it, the it, it, it was 35 degrees, but it felt like 25. Mm -hmm. So to go outside and, and, and no, no, wasn't acceptable. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't get to, um, you didn't get to fly. I didn't get to fly. So tomorrow morning, um, Robert, uh, C, like, I don't, don't remember his last name. He told me he might hit me up cause he works overnight. So maybe I'll hit him up via text or during a live stream, or if he comes in, I'll ask him, are we going out in the morning? I'm hoping this warmth will kind of ride through the night and keep it in the high 30s, maybe early 40s. So when I get up, if it's in the 40s, I'm definitely going. Okay. Well, as long as you got, you know, nice weather, it's, it's not wet. Oh, no, no. It's it's to be, it's to be, it was sunny today, today, too, right? Yes, yeah, it was good today. Today was the best day. day. It's going to be. Yeah, you got the nice weather coming. Eddie Nunez, what's good, man? How are you? What's good, Eddie. Michael McReynolds. Michael, hey, how you doing, Mike? You don't mind if I call you Mike, right? <laughs> no, hope not. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Wednesday nights with those guys. How are you? How are you? It's hump day, middle of the week. Yeah, middle of the week. And I'm bored as hell today. because every time that the weather's nice, I have to do something. Well, so, I just Michael Blade, how are you, man? What's up, brother? I've been doing my, uh, you know, my doctor tour and my <laughs> and my my therapy tour. And yeah. I told you what, uh, you know, I told you what happened mm -hmm. the, with the insurance company's doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, at, at yeah. least you're getting the therapy for your foot, man. Is so that he's saying that um, hey, I have lost, I've lost fifty percent of the usage of it. So it's it. He feels from his examination that it. That's the best that it's ever going to be. 50%. Right. So we'll see. <laughs> well, I'm I'm hoping. Seriously. Um, I'm I'm hoping that you get back to flying. Oh, I will. I will. Oh, yeah. you, you could probably fly now. It's just it's just the the wear and tear on your foot wouldn't help it heal any. Well, you know what it is? Like I told you before, the ankle's still weak. So like certain turns, certain movement is like... Not level ground. Like <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, for those of you who don't know, if, if you don't want Herman to walk in your property, just leave the sidewalk all broken up. He won't go there. <laughs> right? You, you oh, got to no. be on level ground. Yeah. Yeah, so... I guess that's not a bad thing. What's up? Um, what they're saying is that I might not be able to go back to running marathons. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. There's a lot of people that can't run a marathon, but they 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 walk it. <laughs> they ride it on the you bike. I actually thought about it years ago. I never crossed my mind. I used to live in Harlem on 130th between Lenox and 5th. And you know, after they make their last turn, they come across the bridge into Harlem. Mm -hmm. They go down 5th Avenue, which goes straight right, into right. Central yeah, Park. Yeah, I, I know the route. Yeah, so right there at the corner of my block every year, I'd watch the runners on TV. And then as they went up into the Bronx, I'd start mm -hmm. getting ready to go out. 
And then by the time they were crossing the bridge, I think it's the Third Avenue Bridge or the Willis Avenue Bridge, one of those two. Yeah, down there. Coming back into Manhattan, they start coming down Fifth. And by the time I get down to the corner, I'm like, hey, you know, then I run back in. Then, <laughs> but I haven't watched a marathon in a while. Desmond Donders, how are you, sir? David. How are you? Well, yeah, like I said, it was something that had crossed my mind many, many moons ago. No, yeah, not well, yeah, a, a while ago. Let's put it, yeah. let's leave it at that. Well, I've lived in Harlem. I've been here 25, 26 years. So, yeah. so this was pre here 25 years. Yeah, that's a wow. Yeah, I mean, a little old there thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, I thought about it a long, long time ago when <laughs> when you were when you were on tour, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, that's not a bad thing to be standing next to when you're on tour. <laughs> I was on tour. You know, um, what are we gonna do about this? What are we about to do about this? Uh, well, we still have a little bit of time. You have some oh. tech news you could get oh, us into because I, mean, I know everybody wants to to wants to hear DJI this, DJI that. Yeah, I know, and, but you and know, we, but... we'll trust me. We're going to get into DJI, even though everyone has done their reviews. But what I did find out, Herman. Yeah. And and I don't know if Herman puts his hand in his head, then I'm saying something I shouldn't be saying. <laughs> if Herman goes like this. Then maybe I'm saying something I shouldn't. But I came to find out that there are a few YouTube creators out there mm -hmm. that are privileged enough to not have actually owned or tested out the DJI FPV Berg, but they have friends who were able to. And because of that friend, that friend is actually able to help them put out videos. Well, I don't, I don't know. And hey, just me hop, me up. What's good, Lake Pilot? Uh -huh. And and I was just thinking to myself, that's that's a good friend to look out for because if if I had the FPV bird, I would show enough. Say here, Herman, uh -huh. you know, why don't you do a video with while it's hot, you know? So that that's very creative. That just yeah. lets you know how how much of a community we have here in the in the drone world. You would do that for me. Yeah, of course, man. Because of course, I don't know I if my care refresh would cover you, huh? Because I don't know if my care refresh would cover you. Oh no, don't worry about it. I'm not flying <laughs> nobody else's shit. The last time I did that, the drone, I lost the drone. I don't, I don't, I have that kind of luck. People be like, "Yo, man, fly my bird, fly my bird," like John, who's oh, well, rips FP. I just John. John is a nice dude. He just wants. The camaraderie to, to get out there and, and, and do that shit. Hey, Jackson you know, RC. Excuse my language, but you know, that's just how John is. John just wants to get out there, man, and do it. And camaraderie. But if you you, you want to fly, let's go. You know, that's just the kind of guy John is. Yeah, Michael Blade. I didn't want to mention any names, but it, it's good that you have people out there that do that. <laughs> it, it's. Man, man, man. That's it. I should stop there. No, no, no. no I was uh, I was just saying um it's up to Chris at Jackson RC then. Yes. So how is everybody's week? It's the middle of the week. And for those of you across the pond, it's already going in the UK in that area, it's already going into um 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, something like that. And then for those who are listening to the stream at work, like maybe Tim Jackson or a few other people over there in Australia, feet on the ground, it's morning time. I know Rob, feet on the ground. He's, he's um, I think he's retired. What's up, Wells, Rob? How are you? But um, we know Tim Jackson goes to work around this time. Okay. Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned, you asked me that because, um, you know, I, told, I sent you that article. It was, uh, it's just funny because, you know, Verizon and everybody, you know, everybody's fighting for this 5G network and making a big deal about the 5G. 5G, we got to get the 5G, we got the fast no, speed no, network. No, 5G is going to start the zombie <laughs> apocalypse. Well, <laughs> well, no, I'm saying as far as the, as far as the, um, 
the, the carriers and stuff like that. Everybody says, "Yo, get the five G. You need you need, you need to be on the five G to get the faster network." Everything's about more and more speed. So Verizon apparently, I guess, had some customers who were experiencing issues with batteries, and there was a tweet that they had sent out. I guess I guess it was well, what, what, what phone you know, was saying? What happened? What phones? Mostly, it was affecting one particular type of phone. Oh well, it just was a well. They didn't specify in the tweet that they sent out. Just that they had sent out saying that um, one way that you could um, help with the issue is to turn on the LTE service. Now, right. by turning on the LTE service, what that does is it disables the five G network. And this is the network that they've been bragging about for the longest well, for time. For those of you who don't know what the LTE, that's the light network that's basically still basically internet based. And and if you remember when our phones supposedly went to 4G, then they had 4G light. Mm-hmm. Well, this that's the older technology that Herman's talking about. Right. And that that's just basically the thing what I wanted to bring the attention that you know that there and all but it it says but what I'm trying to find I'm looking at the story I'm trying to find the exact quotation of the tweet but they're very slick in the story not when our phones put that 4G then they had 4G right hey Tom how's it going (laughs) hello gentlemen how's it going hey Tom another day in paradise how are you how are you how are you it's it's hump day at least. Oh yeah, I, I, think I, I feel like that. By the way, like I got humped. Well, you want to know, and, what? and not Everyone always an mentally, enjoyable experience. Okay? Everyone's mentally um, drained after the last two days' events. Well, the last event for for um, yesterday's event, which I will get, drained we'll get in into the it wallet. Later. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that it. later. I'm we, one of those people. Trust me, we're going to talk yeah, about okay. um, the new release and all of that stuff. You know, what I was also telling you is that what was that uh, flock of <laughs> flack uh, combines with Kitty Hawk, you know, the emergency um, response and uh, healthcare company. They yeah. announced that they're combining with uh, Kitty Hawk to uh, to establish a joint in uh, in platform. What's up, Eddie? Yeah, Hello, created gentlemen. for the uh, framework for the Project Heavy Lift. Kitty Hawk's latest um, high-performance aircraft to be used in uh, uh, emergency response operations. Well, so the fact that you mention it, yeah. it's high-tech, I like it. Except well, all them props yeah. are really scary. And it's a VTOL. I, yes. I wonder if it's as expensive as what I just shelled out yesterday. I'm just, well, hold might on, let me take a look. Uh, maybe a little more. It's got a few more props. It might be a little bit more than that. But it actually goes from VTOL, the yeah. vertical takeoff mode, to um, aircraft mode, which the engines right. are actually pushing it eventually. Well, it's much more efficient, right, as yeah. a fixed wing. Yes. Because it can get a lot more uh, distance, less fuel burn. True. Uh, there's the more motor, lift surface. You can trim Remember, the motors down quite well. Well, yeah. the motors provide well, this lift. Is an EV in a, yeah. So, oh, it's so, e- okay. E- e- yeah. If if you are just providing lift with the props, they have to work at both lifting, right? And there is no real air surface for low pressure, it's just the surface of those props. Right. Now, of course, you get a fixed wing, you got huge uh wing surface area that promotes lift. Now the motors only have to work to propel, not to lift. Well, and that's where you gain the efficiency. See, just about everything that you're going to see now is going to be a VTOL because... Yeah. The thing that Anything that requires is, distance, right, Herman? Right. But True. everybody is, going to rec- is looking to meet the demand of being able to take off in a dense area. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, well f- first off, it's a lot more efficient from a takeoff and a landing stand- standpoint. And you don't need a because runway. You, with you don't have, right, Lawrence, you don't have to build out infrastructure, really. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, your infrastructure is basically clear sky, <laughs> uh, approximately 125% larger than 
the aircraft that has to take off. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for. Uh, None well, tonight, Welsh Rob. Well, <laughs> it had to be said, didn't it, Welsh Rob? It had well, to be that, said. He's going to give the, the, the stock report on that later. Yeah, don't worry. You know what? Don't See, worry. Now you're you know what's going to happen, though, Welsh Rob? See, now, now you're starting. We're going to get some complaints from NASDAQ because we're going to hear that we're, okay, adjusting the market because we're not letting him say it, okay? <laughs> it's just not right. Those stockholders serve a lot more. Well... Well, they're well, going to use this thing here to assess the potential in drone technology for the pre-hospital and ambulance service for the future, you know, to cut down on response times and stuff like that. And then to, you know, you know, everybody's looking to, get, everything is looking to get faster and to be able to get in and get out, and get into places that- I, I just want to know, being a, being a guy who actually worked on an ambulance mm -hmm. many years ago, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. uh, how do you fit the four family members in there with them? Okay. They don't, they don't, they don't go with you. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we still try that today, Herman. It doesn't always work, okay? Well, you know what they could do? All right above the door on the ambulance, they could put like a bar. Uh, believe me, even they without the bar. On. Hey, Paul, Mary. Even without the bar, they we've had family members hanging on to the rear bumper, Okay. <laughs> Now, the only problem with this is if they start hanging on to the wing, uh, we got problems with lift. OK, that's all I'm saying. No, but you know what? It makes perfect sense. There's a, there's there's a lot of opportunity here uh, to use this in a lot of different ways, even if it's not so much to transport the patient as it is to transport the care provider mm -hmm. to the patient's location. Right. That can stabilize them uh, for more definitive care. Yeah, later, you know, right? I could see something like that yeah. happening out in yeah, the paramedic the response that, unit. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. fact that it's a, a VTOL yeah. makes it even better that they can just get down inside there and, and get it, get it, right. get in there. Right. But you know what I want to see, I, and I haven't seen it yet. I know that that they are trying to design certain VTOLs to patrol cities and stuff like that. But well, it's already being used, isn't it? Sacramento, if I'm not mistaken, Sacramento has a 911 program mm -hmm. where they're actually launching a UAS device from their precincts or police stations. Sure, uh, first to the call, I think we talked about that several weeks ago, hey, where Paul. they respond and they they look down and say, "Okay, yes, yeah, something is needed here," or "Hey, this is a real dangerous situation. Priority one assignment." You know, so uh, it's already being used from that standpoint. Now, uh, Lawrence, we live in a city uh, that's pretty dense and we have yeah. a crime rate that's commensurate with the population density. Right. Mm -hmm. We have these shot systems all over the place. Right. Yeah. So these actually just become an extension of that. So now you have so we have devices mounted on uh mounted on street lights and, and various locations where if there is a gunshot, uh, because right, there's, a, there's a tell. numerous of these around, they can triangulate precisely mm -hmm. the origin of the shot. They, and of they course, very they, precise, they're very me. precise and they can oh, respond. Yeah. They can respond to RMPs, radio motor patrols to that location. Hey, okay. But you could do this with drones also. Okay. And then if you have a 911 call, you can quickly do an assessment for resources that you need to respond. Yeah. You start out your first two units. Right. Okay. Just like, you know, in, in fire departments, the first two units arrive, you know, it, it might be two engines and a ladder or the first two units on scene immediately right. upon rolling up, they call like a 1075 all hands. Hey, you know, I got fire coming out the windows. Then you have second two coming in. And when a chief gets on scene, he then declares a second alarm for additional resource, whatever it might be. So now imagine interspersing a drone into this. Mm -hmm. We were going to talk about a story where the other day where we were looking at a military drone called the Arrow. Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And yeah. and I had worked up some figures on what it was saving mm -hmm. uh, from a from the perspective of. Yeah, you know, uh, course, like it could be it could be five uh you you would have a wing of five to six f-18 okay uh fighters and 
that would cost you. And and I'm trying to remember. Hold on one second. Let me see. While you're I, doing that, I'm actually trying to get to you a video see, or or part of the story that had the the uh, that actually had footage. So you guys could yeah. see. Yeah. So the combat drone. You have to mention. Yeah, these are combat drones. Now, now let me let me just frame this for you. Uh, an F-18. I started to give you that too. An F-18 is comes at a cost of $66.9 million, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, now- I got something. Now, that's not including the cost of a trained pilot. And today, uh, they say that a trained fighter pilot uh, has a value in just training. I'm not talking about the physical value of the pilots themselves. Just leave that up on the screen for a minute there. Yeah. And uh, so a, a pilot- has a training value of $10.9 million. Now, the cost of one of these Kelly Oro Aerospace uh, arrows, those are those ones you see in the front, in front of uh, the formation F-16, yeah. of the of the F-18. If that's an 18. F-18 back there, okay, is they're all autonomous, semi-autonomous, because the flight controller is actually a rear seater in an F-18. And, yes. But these cost 16 million a piece versus 66.9 million correct right. okay uh no additional pilot training except the training above and beyond what the rear seater needs or the rio and they give okay? support they can give support well they can fire weaponry they yeah. can do recon it's a force multiplier think of it that way <laughs> now now if i were gonna say hey we're gonna go conventional methods and i'm just gonna have a squadron of of six F-18s, a flight wing of six F-18s, that's going to cost me about $470 million, okay, in in aircraft cost. If I'm going to instead go with this model where I would have five arrows and one F-18 controller, I'd bring that cost down to $157 million. Or basically, I just got cut that cost in in a third. That's true. Okay. You think about it, Tom. If you could, you could build five of these for <laughs> for the cost of well, yeah. a, a, a little more than the cost of, but it's a force multiplier. Mm-hmm. Also, keep in mind maintenance cost associated. Okay, an F eighteen has an annual maintenance cost of ten point two million dollars. Okay, an right. arrow. An arrow has an annual maintenance cost of $2.95 million because guess what you don't have? You don't have all the safety equipment in there for the you don't pilot. Have the man. You don't have the ejection seat. Right. You don't have right. the instrument panels and extra electronics. Mm-hmm. Okay? You don't have that whole compartment. Nothing to accommodate a human flying it. Yeah. 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 And, and the risk of that human, human that you've invested $10.2 million in training on. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And and a hey, time effort. It's not just the dollars; it's so, the amount of time it takes to train them. So you know, these are, this is one area, and and I hate the idea of it, you know, being used uh, for weaponry. But uh, it it was used for for the military way before we got to play with them. Okay, true. But true. but the thing is here: look at that cost, that value proposition. You can relate that value proposition mm-hmm. to things like we just talked about with the air ambulance, with the, you know, uh, the air mobility ambulance, we'll say. Right. You know, mm-hmm. it, 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 you can get to the patient quicker. You can provide more definitive treatment quicker, which means their hospital stay should be shorter. True. The mortality rate should go down. And. The problem is how do you put values to those things? And that's always where the public has problems assigning value to you, me, and Herman, well, right? Girls, what's yeah. Up? Yeah. So I, I, I agree with you, Tom. I, I like, hey, like, hey, Lost Girls, how are you? Welcome to Wednesday nights with those guys. What's up, Lost Girls? Like well, sure fact, how are you? Tom, that hey, you take the power of one and can now multiply it into five. Force multiplier, right? Yes. yes. We, we and, saw and, that little drone. Okay, our infantry can wear in a chest pack and open it up and send yes. it up and go. Yes. What did you just do? That's a force multiplier. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. you you every every member of that fire team, mm-hmm. yeah, is, is also a forward observer. I mean, 
That's huge. That's huge. We've seen a few things come out that that were nice that the military well, got their hands even on. Well, the military, the remember, the military gets to play fly. with the best toys first. The army's okay? dragonfly. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, that little one. Yes, yeah, you yeah, throw yeah. it up, you know. And and, and yeah, where it comes out of is actually the tablet. Quite some time yeah, yeah, that's been around for a while. Uh, the army made a, a pretty significant uh, procurement not too long ago on those. Okay. Uh, you know, but but think about that. You, you're talking about where are our military right now there in Afghanistan, right? That's some significant terrain to deal with. And being able to put something like this up and look over the next ridge where, you know, the Taliban is sitting in wait to ambush you, uh, you can really turn the tide on that one. Okay. Uh, but again, cost proposition, agriculture, instead of using a crop duster, and I'm a fan of manned aviation, but mm -hmm. uh, how many crop dusting pilots have succumbed to cancer? Okay. You know, because right. of the chemicals. Um, so, you know, when we can do these things safer, mm -hmm. when we can do these things more efficiently, uh, and when we can do them at a much lower cost, you know, I, I, I'm hard pressed not to see the value proposition there. You know, Tom, I was going to bring that story up tonight, and I thought that if we got into talking specifically about the arrow, it would take us away from, you know, what we were going to talk about as far as um, yes. DJI and the uh, the thing that you brought to my attention on Skydio. But um, well, let's talk well, about Skydio. Let's you talk, talk about, about Skydio first. Yeah, you know why uh, Skydio? That's a very important discussion because uh, you're looking at uh, basically the first American company mm -hmm. to have a valuation over one billion dollars. Right. It's pretty significant. You know, hey, hoorah. Uh, we okay. just got to keep that going. They, they just went out for what? Was it another 170 million in, uh, in yeah, capital? 170 million. 170 million in capital. Yeah, the current valuation is over a million dollars. Quite mistyping in, in the title. <laughs> well, you know what it is. Also, it, it, it's a matter of uh, well, buck seventy is a buck seventy. No matter how you you know. So we throw an M after that. We're all good in the edit. Okay. Yeah. What What happens here is here's a company that's blue certified, mm -hmm. right? And now has a valuation above a billion dollars. And what I hope for, and I hope all of you hope for, is a competitive marketplace right. with a competitive marketplace we all win because uh, you get a couple of things out of that right the first thing you get out of a competitive marketplace is me and you get maybe a better price okay yes. that works better for me <laughs> but what really what you really get out of a competitive environment is you get innovation because mm -hmm. everybody to get to to get themselves in the center has to innovate and has to bring more features to the market. Correct. Right? So that, again, bing, another column I take uh, as a benefit for me because I'm going to get better product over time. Yes, so, across the board. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have one of the joint chiefs on your board. Well, you know, the problem with that is uh, if that goes the wrong way, uh, then your company's valuation goes down dramatically mm -hmm. and every one of your shareholders takes it in the pocket. Conflict of interest is something we all have to watch out for uh, mm -hmm. with the crossover between public and private sectors. Okay. We talked about a story the other day about that. With that guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody had his hand in both cookie jars. Yeah. Uh, you can't do it. I can't do it. So guess what? He can't do it either. Mm -hmm. It's an integrity issue also. Uh, how do we know, you know, you have these people that are short selling on us. How do you know theirs is the best product? So yeah. in a competitive marketplace, in a fair marketplace, you can evaluate one against the other. When somebody's got an inside track, you might never see the best product. Okay. Because it won't be given a chance. So that's why you got to fight to maintain integrity laws in this country. Okay. And around the globe for that matter. Because yeah, look, I if there's gonna, not in, I was, was going to say pretty much any everywhere, 
but All but you think yeah. about it come on we've been faced multiple times with lack of integrity in the marketplace oh, they yeah. usually called recalls people remember an airbag recall yeah. uh coming out of japan mm -hmm. somebody was trying to somebody you know trying to get over mm -hmm. making that extra few cents per and as a result Used people died parts. people died as a result of that okay this is what we're talking about now imagine you know that lack of integrity in everything we use from pharmaceuticals on up uh you know so we all have a question of where stuff is made why it's made there why it's made cheaper there uh well because profit is the king I agree. So I agree. Is, and unfortunately, where it's, where it's I have to, or it's necessary. Unfortunately, I have to say this about the United States. There are more people that are greedy as yeah. opposed to people that yeah. have um, morals. And and you know, if you make if you make this pen and it costs three cents to make this pen, there's always going to be someone that says, I can make it for a cent and a half. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you're going to have a situation, recovery drones pointing out, you know, uh, this is a joint chief, uh, you know, probably former joint on the joint chiefs. He was in charge of high tech. Yeah, I understand that. Look, you leave one career. We, we can't expect the military to stay there until they die. So, you know, they're going to do 20 plus years. They're going to leave and move on hey, and Cheryl. go into private sector. You right. want that. What you got to protect against is like I'm bound by conflict of interest laws mm -hmm. that when I leave my position, I can't go work for a company I was instrumentally involved with approving contracts or negotiating. Okay. There's a conflict of interest there in my role. Yeah. I can never do that. Now I can work for other companies and also I can't present myself back to my agency within a, a set period of years. Okay. I can go work for that company. Okay. But I can't present myself in front of representing that company to my former agency for a, a number of years that's set the, depending on your level of involvement. These are integrity laws you got to try to maintain on the books. Otherwise, it's going to undermine our marketplace and it undermines the value and the safety of our product. So that's that's why it's key. Uh, to I'm sorry that about being a little distracted. I'm, I'm actually in the process of working on a logo and somebody was, had just sent me some photos and were like, what do you think <laughs> stuff? So really, and, and if you don't respond to this guy, he has the intention span of a squirrel. He'll, he'll, you won't hear from him for a couple of days. So I have to keep feeding them little, little, you know, little by little. <laughs> At least we know he's not watching the live stream. That's true. <laughs> No, it's a young guy. It, 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 he's actually he's actually a young man. He's a relative um of Drips FPV. John, Big John. Because wow. if you've seen John's new logo, yes, I did. I think that was a very good job. Yes, he did. He, the guy he, that did that is the guy you're talking to. Yes, yes. That, now the only problem I said with John was there wasn't enough gray in the beard. I okay? agree with that. I agree That's right. That. And I said it to him this facts. way. I said, Grandpa, there's not enough uh, gray in that beard. Because John <laughs> just recently became a grandpa. You know what, Lawrence? I, I might need to speak to him. I, I tell you, that was excellent. That was a, that was it a nice It inspired level. me because I asked, now see, this is why you don't do work with family members. Because I have a nephew who does ja a Japanese anime. He's actually went to Japan and China to study it. He went abroad. He he. He's here from the States, but he went over there. And the funny thing is he's tall. I'm 6'3". Like mm -hmm. I said, I'm the midget in my family. And he's like about almost 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and they thought he was a famous basketball star. So wherever he went, they kind of like gave him royal treatment, even though he wasn't, right? Right. And I asked him, oh, hold on a second, Scott. I nice asked him, down, by the way. I asked him, could you draw me a logo? Mm -hmm. Now, this was... Six months ago, I said, I will give you some ideas, throw some sketches at me and come back to me with a price. And then I saw this, this guy do this logo for John. And I was like, you know what? That was bad. That was I'll tell a really you, yeah, nice yeah, it, logo, man. You know what? And it, it, it really captured the essence of John there. So I, that's what I liked about it. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. He, he uh, you know, it, it, it was... The first time I saw it, I knew exactly who it was, right, Lawrence? 
I mean, when you saw uh, yeah, John's you logo, exactly who it is, like you right know. away, you knew that was that was. Good. That's why I said it was, was a very good, good job. Yeah. Very good job. Yeah, very good job with it. Very good job. Uh, well, Rasho, I know, I know. We'll talk about that uh, that DJI issue any minute. Don't worry. Well, as you know, or as we know, the long anticipated DJI FPV drone was released. The combo was released yesterday. It launched 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Many of you jumped all over it. Some of you didn't. Some of you are waiting. Well, what do we know? We know that we get the drone. We have a battery with this drone, I guess, that's coming with Then We got the V2 uh, goggles. This thing has a dedicated remote control and an intuitive... Um, motion controller option. We're looking at DJI's latest O3 transmission system. You're also looking at 4K video, 60 frames per second, rock steady, uh, stable image stabilization. Mm -hmm. And um, it has a uh, new emergency braking and hovering, a return to home. And it has a uh, flight experience for every skill level of pilot. It has an, uh, an N mode, an M mode, an S mode in the uh, controller. You know, um, <laughs> you know, I was looking at this. I saw the video. I saw, I saw the, the launch. And I, and I had to catch it on my phone because I was out. Because I had to take care of some things. In the That's what I actually did. I actually checked um, it out on my phone as well. What do you think, Tom? Because I know you jumped on this. Well, uh, I'll just tell you what time my order was time stamped on. Uh -huh. 8.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know what? Yesterday. Tom, I'm not mad at you. You know why? They released it at 9, but I had mine ordered and paid for by 8.25 a.m. I'm ecstatic about this drone, not the drone pictures of the broke guys who smashed it into a wall tree look, slash... Look. Right. Okay, I'm, I'm that, that photo right there. The question is bad pilot or assassin, right? Yes. Okay, that's yes, what I post. You yes. saw what I posted. For those okay. of you who don't know what we're talking about, I have the picture here somewhere. I just have to go and find it in my folder here. Um so uh I'll, I'll well yeah while, while Lawrence doing is that. doing that, I will relate to you my experience. Okay. Uh, by the way, like I said, I got to order uh, it a go. bit earlier than most yesterday. Um, here we go. And that's probably related to my DJI Select membership uh, <laughs> because I logged on to the site. You know, I was getting ready to, to log into work around uh, nine or so. I did push a meeting I know back. You, I, know I did push a meeting back. Okay. On the internet. Uh, but uh, yeah, again. Uh, I think that was a trained assassin there. Okay. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, Tom. Yeah. To shear off both front arms and one of the rear arms, he had to be moving at top speed and hit something metal. He, he, hits, he hit something at that top speed of 97 miles an hour. Yes. Okay? Yes. Because I'm going to say, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I take this down so you can see see me right. personally, but I can what tell you, tumble because I this see drone that. is hit, this drone is hit a, a, a lamp, a street lamp in the park, you know, one of the yeah. lamps yeah. that light up the park at 50 miles an hour and the wind was blowing 30. So I'm guesstimating maybe about 60, 70 miles an hour and this thing flew. I didn't even know I had cracked the arm until someone came and looked at the bird a week later. I was flying it around and He's up there, ready. I can't compete with you. I don't get my <laughs> FPV pilot wings yet, but give all it some can, time. Eddie's my crack. Is, Eddie's my crack dealer, by the way. Eddie's been trying to sell me this drug uh, for months and months and months. Okay, Have you, you've seen this. Tell me, also, and, and you know what, Herman? Let me just yeah. ask Herman a question, okay? Because I don't want Herman to be silent over there because he knows the real story. Tell me, Lawrence is in a crack dealer too, Herman. My comes to FPV. <laughs> tell me, tell me. It comes okay, to FPV. so, he so tried. Uh, look, look. I, I, I told I don't you know guys. What you guys are talking about. I told you guys ahead of time 
why I was looking at this and why I was pulling the trigger on it. To me, it's another creative platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll exercise it accordingly. Now, what I like, and, and this is, you know, look, I, I watched almost every video I could get my hands on yesterday. Okay. I tell you, Billy's was probably one of the better ones. Uh, okay. The thing is that I'm not expecting to be out of the box day one. I plan on being on the simulator with the goggles on and the controller in my hand yeah, to develop that muscle memory. for you, Tom. Well, okay. Of course well, he will. Of course he will. He's he thinks he's going to get an inside price on a broken one. Well, Tom, but <laughs> I got DGI Care Refresh. Right. And, he and said he would repair it. He didn't say he would repair it while you owned it. Right. <laughs> and Herman, they will yes. cover you even in FPV manual flight. Okay. Well, I got that. What, so, I, what I'm saying so is that, that rumor what, did not bear out to be true. Right. Okay. But everything, I got to be honest with you. So let me lower my voice a little because now we're going to talk about price. Okay. And I can't afford to buy this much in women's shoes either. Okay. So just let me speak in hushed tones here. Okay. <laughs> I had sticker shock when I was done. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's, that should tell you something. This you is had, probably, sticker I, shock, Tom? I had sticker shock and I'll tell you why. So the bird was 1300. They sold you the floor mats too. Dude, I bought the floor mats, the extended warranty, and the underproofing. Okay? Yeah. So I got the motion controller. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see passing that up. Okay. Uh, I got the fly more combo. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, two extra batteries plus the charging hub, extra propellers. Uh, and I got two years worth of DJI care refresh. Damn it. I'm going on DJI right now. Uh, so guys, I paid over exactly. Daryl Hickman has it 100% right. And Tom has been saying this from the beginning. It's an FPV drone. It's not an FPV freestyle no. or race drone. No. And, and look, and here's the, here's the good thing about it. Let's start, start off on the simulator. A DJI has it out right now. So you could download it. Okay. But you'd have to use your fingers on your phone. When you get your, your kit, you'll be able to plug your goggles directly into your phone with the cable provided, and you'll be able to fly the simulator on your phone through your goggles using the controller. I'm not sure. It, I, I, it works with the motion controller, but I'm waiting to see that, okay? In the simulator, I mean. So you'll get to fly in the simulator, and I plan on doing that after uh, after work every day, a few well, hours at a time. Oh, I see what you did, Tom. Okay. Those of you who saw the commercial <laughs> yesterday, uh, it, because basically that's what it was. It was a well-timed commercial because I was watching it on YouTube. And when I got to the room, there were only 2,000 um, oh, people found in the now. chat. When the video was over, there were over 6,000 plus. You yeah. found it. Yes. So, okay. So, you know, the... <laughs> The good thing about this is now, after you're done with the simulator, mm -hmm. you can go out and fly it in normal mode, just like you would fly your camera drone. Okay. Right. So it's a good transition into that, but it's not like your camera drone. And I'll tell you why. You got goggles on now. You're in a more immersive environment. So now you, you start know. off in. Now you start off in normal mode. Hey, Tom, I wanted to show you this. You, yeah. you get to experience this where he hovers with the drone. And I must correct myself because I did say yeah. that the big black button, I had thought hypothetically the big black button had to do with pitch. It's not. It's the air brake. Yeah. The big black button. Well, is it, brake, it's like is... the panic button on the RC. Okay. Uh, there's a panic button on the RC, a pause right. button on the RC. And so on the motion controller, okay, that's the black. But we think, again, I got to get in my hands. I haven't seen all of it. But again, I'm following Billy. I'm following several people up there. I watched Peter McKinnon's. I watched uh, because I know he's not really a drone pilot. He's a photographer. That's why I like Peter. Uh, you know, uh, ready, set, drone. Well, actually, it's a little bit more complicated uh, than we thought it was. 
Yeah. And, and see, here, here's, here's the point I was trying to make. You can graduate yourself. You start off with the simulator. You go into normal mode. Mm-hmm. From normal mode, you got three different sport mode levels. Yes. Correct. And each um, one of these brings a different speed to the equation and much it, more roll. Then you have manual, but you have manual with a leveling component based in it. They call and that then you have mode. Right. And then you have a complete manual mode, which makes you do a fail save. You have to set TV, it on the yeah. controller, and then you have to purposely set it in the goggles. Now, the other things that we have to do is we, we have to make some setting changes. And that's why I, I love watching a guy like Billy Kyle, because Billy goes through, you know, here's how I'm tuning mine. Mm-hmm. And here's the type of flight I'm getting, you know, where others right. might be and, much and more he, aggressive. He made, Billy, sure to, he made sure to make it known that it was a loner for testing. Yeah. And he was flying it in a, this one of the simplest modes that they had. Because, but he wound up yes. Lawrence, flying it in each of every mode to the point now where he's flying in that full FPV mode. Now, yes. there's yes. a guy I follow. I know Eddie follows him too. We, we love this guy because his production value is really high. Iphonito. Okay. Iphonio. Yeah. Iphonito. He puts out some great stuff. In fact, guys, uh, he flew at a desert water park that's been deserted for years. And if you check my YouTube, you'll see I flew two years ago. Actually, two years ago, uh, this coming Monday, okay, at that location. And I plan on flying there again, maybe next week or the following week. Because while I ordered my drone yesterday morning, mm-hmm. it's getting delivered tomorrow from DJI. OK, so a uh, quick ship, guys. Uh, you know, they this is mine is coming from we're on the East Coast. For those of you that don't know. Uh, so mine is shipping from uh, Forest Park, Georgia. OK, so they've had these staged probably throughout both the, East Coast, West Coast. Throughout the United States. Yes. Yeah. Which is yeah. very smart. You cover the coast and you cover the coast closest to the larger cities which are going to move your product faster. Makes yeah, a lot of sense. It'll right. trickle down into other states like Philadelphia. Sure, it's Delaware. easier to ship from these larger locations because yes. they have hub they have hub airports. Right. Guess it's what? Far city, to ship from Atlanta. Large city to large city. Yeah. Definitely. Atlanta. Definitely. Okay. Have, Thanks, Welsh Rob. So uh, companies that collect that they get their deliveries to an, another hub and they just yeah. do their own. Yeah. So, you know, look, DJI got to hand it to them. Uh, while we were all discounting this, that, and the other thing, it looks like they came to the game answering it. Okay. Well, yeah. And I even the detractors, good. even the detractors um, out there who were like, out, yeah, I'm a true said, FPV pilot, are even saying, hey, I've, we, it's we've not a it. racer. It's not a freestyler. Okay. Right. You know, right. and that's well, not, and that's Lawrence, not what I it's think, designed to do. It's designed as a cross trying to create their own situation and do yeah. their own thing and meet yeah. their own and, and maybe even changing people's thoughts right. on what and how to get into this. Exactly. Well, and that's exactly look at they have the largest share of the camera drone market. Guess who they're bringing along for the ride, guys? Oh, it's the same thing Verizon did to make themselves large in the cell phone business. What is the most costly thing in business? It's new customer acquisition. Mm-hmm. They resolved that already. They got a customer already base have a who's customer. buying this, right? And yeah, recovery drone. That's right. It's right off of Interstate 15 uh, between Boston and uh, like Prim or uh, just the border of Vegas. So you know, it, it's the L.A. to Vegas run. You'll find that water park. But also along that stretch, I'm going to hit what's called Seven Mountains, Seven Magic Mountains. It's an art installation in the desert where they've stacked okay. these gigantic boulders and artists mm-hmm. basically painted up these boulders and then stacked them. Uh, they're about, I would say, probably four or five stories tall. And they just stand in the desert. So another great place to fly. And the other thing is, I plan on flying this thing in the great wide open. You can get Uh, close to them? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be able to fly around. Yeah, Herman, unlike here on the East Coast, they allow you to observe 
and fly a decent, safe well, distance no, what because I mean by you don't have 20 like people trying up. to fly it at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean by getting close to it, meaning like you can walk up to it. Oh, actually, you can. Yeah, it's uh, it's off Interstate 15. It's uh, there's a big parking lot right there. And I would say maybe a 150 yard walk into the desert to get to that art installation. Well, remember, well, remember, they bury cars like halfway in the there. soil, halfway in the sand out there, and they call it an art installation, too. OK, so. You know, Lawrence, you live in New York. Mostly everything you fly, you fly over the fence. True. Yeah, right. Yeah, True. not many fences out there, dude. I mean, the old ghost towns you can walk around out there. You'll you'll come upon stuff. You Well, they've, they've rebuilt over all the ghost towns here in New York City. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you, you mean the projects? No, there's still some around. No, there. well, well, not including the projects, but I mean, oh, okay. all of these, all of these new neighborhoods popping up from here. The ghost towns in Manhattan now, dude. Okay, you mean Kent Avenue. Yeah, Kent Avenue. Yeah, we, uh, big difference in Kent Avenue. Broadway yeah. down. Talk about gentrification. Look at Kent Avenue. Uh, those were all warehouses. If recovery drunk, recovery one says it'd be a very Red good idea to, to hit everything out there, Tom. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you know. Uh, hey Robert, what's up? How are you? Hey Robert, how are you, bro? Uh, you know, it, hey, it's Robert. Uh, well, Robert. Just to let you know, I did pull the trigger, and the uh, DJI FPV drone is coming tomorrow. So, uh, follow us. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button and watch the calamity yes. over the next few weeks. OK, you know uh, but yeah, uh, flying out there is going to make a huge. Yeah, well, I, I could go to Calvert. I could go over to, to uh, Flushing. I could, but out there, I don't have to. I don't have to worry about anything. I actually don't Except even have to coyote, worry about coyote, wolf well, spiders. I, I mean, there's other things you can do about that that I'm prepared for. Don't you worry. OK, so don't be sneaking up on me, Lawrence. That's all I'm saying. Listen, listen, listen. Okay? If I do, if I do, Herman. I'm going to be looking like Xavier in a bright orange suit. That's right, like the man. The Stay Puff Man. Okay. <laughs> you see me? Oh, on. that's the one they're going to attack. Listen, check this. No, out. he's talking about me. That I, I don't errantly uh, think he's a coyote <laughs> coming at me. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Hey, for. Max, oh, there I'm the coyote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Lawrence, did you okay. see this FPV drone? You're looking at the price of putting all of this stuff together. Yes, I, I did. I, I, I did. But you know what would sell me on this? If I wasn't so far into down the rabbit hole oh, of regular FPV? It's funny you say that. You know why? Because uh. in Billy's first video, what he does is he says, I just spent the boatload and he pulls up a big, you know, storage container. And mm -hmm. then like a day later, they sent me, you know, they called me and said, hey, you want to try out this DJI FPV drone? Mm -hmm. So he put everything in a box and put it away. He goes, I, 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 why, why does he have it now? He's probably going to raffle it off. Let's suggest he <laughs> raffles it off. Okay. <laughs> but you know what it is? It solved a few problems, right? Uh, and, and I'll give you my personal on it. I, it's not that I'm not good at soldering. I, I went through that decades ago in, in aviation high school. I can solder. Okay. Do I want to solder is the question. The answer to that is a simple no. Right. Do I want to tinker? Do I want to tune? No, I'm a photographer. Give me the lens. Let me twist it on the camera. Let me go out there and use no, the that's tool I have. Is my eye, right? That's but here's the other thing they solve for me. There's a safety issue. You know, being an FPV flyer, you know what it is to deal with these battery packs. Mm -hmm. And tell me how many of you FPV pilots haven't mm -hmm. had a mishap or two with one of those Light if you packs. haven't, something's okay? seriously wrong. Right. But this is something you got to watch like a hawk while you're charging. Otherwise, it can burn down your damn house. So yeah. a, another mark in the con column uh, well, for I'm me going the traditional the route. Yeah, but the, the intelligent battery that they've included this time, and I like, I like the design of it, too, because you can keep it inserted but disconnected. Okay? So even in your bag, it can't turn on. But the right. nice thing about that is it's self-discharging. In fact, I believe with this battery, they do want you to charge it after use, not immediately after use, but after use, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it will self-discharge itself after a couple of days down to the proper storage. And they'd rather have it there than too low, mm -hmm. okay? 
They're also highly recommending don't bleed this thing down. Don't pull your your distance testing and get that battery down to a zero because you're never going to get it back up to a full capacity. You know, they're saying don't go below 20%. Don't go below. Yeah, because, you know, it, it's a safety margin, which really means don't go below 10. Okay, because you got to put in the idiot factor. It's really 10, but let's add an extra 10 just for the idiots out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, it's not something you have to turn around and watch like a hawk when you put it on a charger because the charger, okay, is an intelligent charger and it shuts off after they're fully charged. Right. Now, of course, the battery right. hub charges in series, not in parallel, mm-hmm. okay, which means there'll be aftermarket uh, charges out there, which I'm not going to be a party to because I got DJI care refresh, okay? Right. Well, so the price of the second battery is about 150 US. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cheap? No. It's but then still, again, when, you know, and that's a 6S battery. So that's a pretty yeah. significant battery there. Well, you think about it, decent, decent ba- batteries vary. I mean, the, the more oomph you want in them, the more yeah. you're going to pay. I have a battery here for my long range. This is a 6S. Okay, now standard 6S, if I can find one really quick, here we go. A standard 6S is this big. Right. Okay, this here, you can find anywhere from, they start at about $60 and go as high as $100. Right. This one starts at about $20 and goes as high as 30 or $40. But look at the engineering that went into the DJI battery, right? And yeah. Yeah. And, and and the other thing is, come on, guys, this is groundbreaking because you guys are used to, what, five minutes flight, maybe? Mm-hmm. Okay. We were up until they started coming out with these four-inch birds right. that are giving us anywhere from seven to 20 minutes. But they're but, small. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you know, right. this is something so that out of the right box there? is flying at 20 yeah. minutes. Okay. Yes. FPV, out the box. Yeah, FPV, FPV, full on balls ass to the wall, seven to nine minutes worth of flight time. That's still significant. Okay. Still pretty awesome for an FPV bird of this size. The camera is a, is a decent camera. Okay. Well, decent in the fact that Look, look, we would have been raving about this camera just a year or so ago. Four okay? K at sixty. Well, they were. Yeah. And FPV <laughs> is impressive. Is impressive. And 1080 at 120. Yes. Also. Okay. So I, I've heard I've heard, you know, the detractors and 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 you know, oh, the props show up in the dude, you you're flying an FPV bird. Okay. Yes. The but you can crop it. Go into post and go ahead and crop. I like the okay? goggles, really. Well, the goggles, goggles are really, really something. You know what it is? No, being no, immersed, no, being in, inside. You know, uh, come on, we got to ask our uh, FPV flyers here. You feel like you're flying well, to some you, degree, well, right? You, you, you've flown your um, regular drones with goggles before. Yeah, but not the same experience. Okay. Uh, I, I would say, though. I would say more immersive, yes. Because Tom, mercy. Tom, this is like I was telling Lawrence, you know, when we started flying the drones, and the one thing that I always had issue with was flying the drone with hey, Stevie. my phone. I, I never really liked the idea of it. And then I moved up to a tablet. And I said to Lawrence, you know, with the most, the thing that, and that's why I've always had that hood. Yeah. Because I yeah. have to, I, I, I just can't. And when, when I tried the goggles with the Phantom, I remember I was with Xavier and Xavier was like, oh, don't go too far because if you never did it before, and I'm like, where was this all my life? Well, buddy, <laughs> blue eyes, okay? <laughs> so me and that son don't always get along with each other. Mm-hmm. So remember, I'm Herman, you know me, I'm the guy with those Epson Mulvarios. Yeah. Okay? So uh, I, I want to see the image before the sunglasses because the other thing was, guys, you got a tablet, and mm-hmm. then you put polarized sunglasses on. Guess what happens? Well, I can't see that tablet that well. Black now. screen. That's okay? true. Now That's take the true. sunglasses off. Well, now the sun glare, I can't see. Mm-hmm. And right. then remember, so unless, you have, you, unless you have a sunshade. Uh, or a DJI ultra bright monitor at mm-hmm. 2000 nits. That's true. Okay? 
the so, uh, guy, and yeah. by the way, guys, I'll, I have one available for sale. Uh, I thought somebody you hear that out there, me, Crystal Sky. Followed up there, okay, Crystal Sky, uh, two thousand nit brightness. But um, look, this is a different feel because you, unless you actually put your Mavic in FPV mode, and then it's like you know only so much, you're getting a more more immersed feeling flying this FPV type of bird. The other thing is the way this little sucker looks, okay? Mm -hmm. It looks like it's ready to bite. <laughs> you know, it sits up on its haunches. Now, lime green hood cover. Where the hell is a decent skin these days? I got to well, skin that bad. I know what the course. problem with that is, Tom. It's visible. I, I know why they went with that particular color. Yeah, visibility. That particular color. Exactly. Yeah, visibility. It was either that color I've or I've already or made my decision. Yellow. I'm going solid color, guys. And I'll tell you where really? I'm going. I'm going orange. You think the orange flu is already taking place? Really? You haven't seen it yet. I'm going orange. Hey, I, I want the, all those Ortel Evo flies to feel a little more comfortable. Oh, the okay? orange fever. When you go yeah, zip yeah. and bass them, right? With the orange fever. How yeah. Are you going to get it yeah. In orange? yeah, as I zip past them at uh Hey you Stevie, know, you're more than welcome to come out here, man. You got plenty of a beach yeah, Stevie, area and a great uh, park. After all that traveling, you got enough money, uh, enough scratch for this new bird. What's the deal? Yeah, he said it's coming tomorrow morning. Yeah, there he you says go. it's coming tomorrow morning. You and me, okay. buddy. So <laughs> Expect to, I don't expect to see Paul or Stevie for a while. No, you know what it's, it's going to be? I'm going to be sitting at home. On the okay, simulator. Doing the Stevie Wonder sitting in the chair. You're going to have to. Like I okay. told you, Tom, if you remember this, while if you're sitting down, just put your chin. Because uh, I've already not, been there. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. I got to put the cervical collar up on to keep my neck <laughs> up, yep. okay? Yeah, that's true, Eddie. The orange flu. Tom's yeah. faking. Yeah. Tom's got the fake orange flu. Hey, though. dude, I that's <laughs> I'm selling anybody out there who buys this DJI FPV. Come on, guys, let's get together and let's car. all skin that car. little sucker. Put it in the car. Did, did you pull the trigger, dude? I'm, 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 I'm. He can't help himself. Look at look at it. Is that sweat on your brow? What is that? <laughs> okay. Look, I say yes. we all we all skin that uh, that cover. Okay, safety orange. Come on now. Safety orange? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, Ortel's color is actually Coast Guard orange. I that found it out. I, I he did, did a, it. I did a little research. Hey, wait a second. You didn't You didn't add all the good stuff, man. Where's that motion controller? You got to pull the trigger. I did. On I that showed motion. that in the video. The guy was like this, and it took Dude, off. dude, you, Herman, you didn't add the motion controller? You're going to give me that Xavier story? Oh, I got to learn. I, I got to learn the uh, regular <laughs> RC before I buy the motion. Can, screw that shit. Come on, man. You know you're going to want to try it. They should be charging a premium if you don't buy it right now. <laughs> they should say, you don't buy it now, of course, you're $2.99 tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Come on I bet now. people would buy it then. Come you're on You're talking now. about the, the, fly, the fly more. Well, the flight. Look, 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 look. I, I didn't expect you to spend as much scratch as I did just now. I'm hurting from that, okay? But the motion controller, dude. Plus the motion controller. This is work. This is what they're gonna. What they're gonna sell uh, the, this, the the Mavic Three for? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, What's that go for? you took the words right out of my mouth, Herman. You're right okay? about that. Whoa. They, you know what? I'm hoping now. Mavic 3 don't come out for another year or so because I got to stop working so <laughs> Hey, come on, man. Hey, good evening, Brent. Brent Ariels. Gary, what's up, man? Yeah. I but, thought about um, spray painting the, it. The, I don't know. The, 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 ooh, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brent Ariel said I should just spray paint the uh, green cover. Okay. Spray paint it? Yeah, I just got to be careful. You know, the other thing I want to check on is uh, any void on the warranty there because you ain't screwing me on that. Well, oh. um, okay. Honestly, I think in you might be able to get in the accessories. Well, I read I well, they're gonna come Let out with more armed. colors. They're gonna come get out with armed. more colors, they said, right? And stuff like that. They for claim, it. yeah, they, they claim uh, yeah. they probably will. There's probably a demand for them already. They're holding back. Yeah. 
you know, because they want to have it in their accessories well, list. Look, so, I thought I was one of the ones that said, "Real, really, I, I thought they weren't going to release the motion controller right away because they would first gauge sales no, no. And, and then hit you. But boy, oh, boy, that uh, was that was nice. That they came out they just it, hit man. you with the one, two. That's what you call a two piece. Yeah, Actually, but you know, know what? It, that was a three piece combination. Yeah. That hit you with here. But yeah, but, but you know, true. you know what? you have to give them credit for is the fact that put these pieces together separately and tell me you're not paying more. Okay. The quality of the FPV drone, you have the goggles. We know they're not cheap. You have that new controller and everything's modular, but everything, everything is in the same ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, out of the box, it works. Right. Instead yeah. of introducing a third party control. device in and then having to tinker and futz with it to find out that there's some compatibility issues. Mm -hmm. OK, well, that's what I said. If well, yeah, of course, off, the next one would be better. Well, it's right. very modular. And, and Tom, I can tell well, you, the parts, the video, look, there are parts available. I sale. sent a video to Herman yesterday and the guy actually tears down the FPV bird part by yeah. part by yeah. part. And. Look, I, I, look, Stevie just said Kentucky Fried Chicken has gotten it right all this time. Two piece and a biscuit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same for DJI. Okay. And and Brant Ariels, you have you have to give what tells something to sue over. Okay. Keeps them busy. Of course, they don't have it, it's like they got nothing but time on their they hands got, shipping out aircraft, pat, right? They have a what do you still on orange too? Yeah. Uh, well, probably that orange until they find out that's Coast Guard orange. Okay. <laughs> And it's on every K-POC and every uh, life preserver known to man, okay? <laughs> but uh, look, they need, okay, to be distracted because they don't have enough time on their hands right now to actually put out aircraft. Don't you still have to reserve and put money down? And then I think, what is the wait right now? It's two months to get your bird after you order? With hotel? Yeah. No. Are they, uh, well, you can buy them through B&H now. Right. Well, there's a few people that have them in stock. Yeah, B and H has, so, has them in stock. I'm sorry, it's, sure. I missed both. It's, it's the uh, the other guy, Skydio. You. Yeah. Oh, it's Skydio. That's yeah. what I mixed up. Oh, okay, that's what I mixed Skydio. up. Skydio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's with yeah. Skydio. You have to um, wait till uh, your child's probably in in school by the time you get yours. Well, you go to the next CES and see who else has vaporware to sell you today. Okay. Well. Honestly, I think Lawrence was still taking pre-orders on the V-Copter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Ehang gave him a better deal, Herman. Yeah, oh, is see, that what see, happened? See, That's what I happened, wasn't though. going to mention him to you. I'm happened. still not going to because Ehang, you guys are doing it for me. Did the buyout. <laughs> yeah, I, but what commercial well, they, shows they up? They bought your plan? But FYI, <laughs> Ehang's stock is at $42 right now. Really okay. good, good. So let's see now. what it is by no, the end of the, end of the stream. Okay? Listen closely. That's what I we should watching. do. Guys. They yeah. peaked. E Hang peaked when they did the launch in Korea, uh -huh. and and it was at a, this crazy yeah. amount. If now it's at forty two dollars and change per share, uh -huh. and they're getting ready to release something else. So that's all I'm going to say. Huh. <laughs> in other words, what you're you, telling us is we need to get down or lay down. Well, the thing is, uh, yeah. he doesn't think he's going to get the dividend payout this year like he expected, especially after the Korean release. You just got to read between <laughs> the lines there, okay? And and, and Herman, all I got to say is you're not monetized, so he can't run it. He can't run an e-hang commercial uh, midstream, right? That's yeah, true. there you go, man. Uh, on my hands there you go. tied there. <laughs> hey, is uh, is original <laughs> Dobo still running Drone X commercials on his channel? I was wondering. No, no, he actually <laughs> he, he actually resolved that issue by having. Okay. I'm glad because I thought Ken was going to reach through the screen and strangle, uh, you know. Okay. No, he actually he actually has a ban on Drone X Factor posting any commercials on it, and did, he okay. had to go through a, a bunch of loops and stuff to get it done. But um, well, it, it's yeah. So you know, so uh, the, recovery drone says Skydio. Skydio, think like Bentley, hand built each drone by one person, and they not only You're build it, it they actually that one person delivers it yeah, to you yeah, too, right. right? With white he gloves on, it over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he 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 
puts the props on the first time for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, service not offered. He'll walk it over there to you, no matter yep. where you live. Yeah, so I wound up buying uh, basically all the components from the motion controller, controller to the RC all the way through to the bird. And of course, who doesn't look good in the goggles? Who? Come on. And then, my and wife said to me, Tom, "What planet are you going to be from?" They do okay? have skins for them. And what? Oh, for the goggles? Yeah, no, yes, I want the yes, skin for the, for the that plate, green. Yeah, for the plate right there, they have the um skins that fit right over the plate, just inside the antenna. What they need to do is make something that's got like bug eyes on it. So when you stand there, people. Well, you know Ken Heron, right? That's what Come Ken Heron did with his. Come on, with the with the with the with the bird eye with the big eyes on his uh phantom, right? Okay. Oh no, oh, I'm we talking didn't... about on the goggles. No, I oh. know. But that's what you got to do is you got to put. Didn't isn't that what he did? He put them on there. Well, I didn't he... see. Oh, oh, Ken. No, we didn't see that. What uh, is there? A brand Eddie? new one, Eddie? Come on, says, man. You're not keeping Ken's me up to rant date about it. Xavier, not recently. What oh happened? yeah, oh yeah. That's some oh things. well, not oh, recently. missing out on things, man. Even you're though I did out. see a picture of him with his with supposedly six hours in FPV, and, I, and like he was about to throw up in his toilet. I I mean, <laughs> no, I I didn't. I must have missed that. It, it's yeah, on. Go if back. you go to NYC Five Borough, you'll see he put it on the goggles, and somebody no. was spoofing him on the goggles, and he was using an Xbox controller because DRL comes on Xbox, or you can oh. you can actually take the Xbox controller or PlayStation controller, and it they work with most simulators. Right. But right. people were saying that the Xbox controller, which I agree with ten thousand percent, is not good enough it'll no. get you the basics of up and right. down but right. first of all the, the throttle stuck in the middle well Where you I... know see and that's another think about the design features that dji brings right so they had to craft this that it would work across a, a great number a, you know a diverse demographic of flyers uh so they made it where that stick your throttle is spring loaded right yes. now. That's what us yeah. camera flyers are used to. And yeah. if if the first time I pick up a remote and it's flopping down, I'm going to think it's broken. Right. Okay. I, I flew RCs for a long time, so that's not what I think. But but the majority of camera drone flyers won't know what to do with that. Okay. And you know we're used to everything going back to to midpoint. Well, mm -hmm. the nice thing is you can flip over the controller. You lift up the little grippy and they provide a tool where you make yes. the spring adjustments yes, and now your rc is a conventional mode two and of course you can change that if you're if you're a mode one flyer you, you you can reverse things uh just don't hand those controls to somebody who's used to mode two, used to mode two. okay yeah, uh but that again another another design feature that dji brought to the table Mm -hmm. uh, so now you can adjust that to your. Listen, liking. I'm going to tell you right now. Up what until the DJI Bird came out, professionally or non-professionally, you had to deal with what I consider not ugly looking because I fly FPV and I can tell a difference in frame designs and stuff like this. But professionally, if you pull up to do a job and you have about two or three of those in a little case and you're ready to fly, it looks a lot better than some of these other models that you understand well, what I'm saying? I, just to fit and finish a DJI, Prosthetically, right? it looks better. Cosmetically, what, yeah, what DJI, what DJI does, okay? <laughs> uh, we're going to, some people are going to need prosthetics prosthetics after flying some of these because oh, they're going to have their it. fingers in the wrong place right mm -hmm. okay make sure you count 10 after you're done flying this okay uh but you know look like anything else they bring a certain level of design innovation and mm -hmm. quality to the game you mm -hmm. can't discount them well that. i'm going to tell you okay I, I agree with you tom and i'm going to tell you somebody put me on actually hadley put me onto a site of a company that makes waterproof cases for FPV drones. Right. right. So it was a matter of time. And the fact that DJI, DJI came out with a case on their drone, well, that only fits the DJI style. But I can honestly tell you, there are cases and kits out there you can buy 
to waterproof your bird. Yeah. So if it falls yeah. in the water, it will float. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they some of them can actually take off from right. in the water. Oh yeah, I've seen those things. So so the fact that DJI has this here, I see the next version maybe being waterproof. Yeah, I, I you know look. The uh, skies are the limit with it. The thing is that remember what happens with DJI product, okay? It gets released. We all feel, okay, us early adopters all feel like we're beta testers, even though we're not True. beta testers because it's in production. But you know what that means? There's always, there's always firmware releases that make it better. I mean, look at the Mavic Air, the firmware releases on the Mavic Air, how much better they mm -hmm. made that bird, even on the Mini. Hey, Johnny's but, wrong. But uh, the Mavic 2 was a good candidate that it, that it kept on getting better and better with firmware releases. Oh, the original Mavic had more. And I want to put out something also. I've never yeah. seen in my life. Yeah. Tom and Herman, here's something that nobody mentioned during any of their reviews. And, and I'm kind of glad that we get to mention it here first. But what? that FPV bird is RFID compliant. Because it broadcasts and it uses GPS. Well, come on. Anything DJI is going to release after last January but nobody is going to be it. fully compliant. Nobody mentioned it. They don't I've want to mention it because of the a negative connotation that people associate yeah. right now with remote that ID. That would be a great feature. It's already RFID. It's you don't have to now ID. add it to your bird. Right. You know? Yeah. But think yeah. about all the things you would have to add. Okay to one of your conventional drones to get it mm -hmm. anywhere near the safety features that come on this particular drone. Listen. And you'll say, why? I don't need True. all those safety features. Right, because you're a tinkerer, a totterer, and you don't mind walking a distance to go pick it up off the ground. The data okay? that into you got to tune it. Okay, you got to other drones. Yeah, you got to talk dirty to it to get it to fly properly. Okay, <laughs> this is out of the box. This satisfies everybody's going to jump on that. This satisfies my need, okay. And when it does, that's when you pull the trigger. If it doesn't satisfy yours, I completely understand. Doesn't make you a bad person. I don't even want to know your political affiliation. It has nothing to do with this. <laughs> it's just look. We all the FPV flies came out and said, "Oh, there's terrible." But today, talk to some of those FPV flies, and they're going. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. Now it might not be for them. Okay, it's Listen, not. It's not a racing keep, drone. Keep in mind, it's the digital first has a certain one. amount of latency. It's the it's first a, one. You have to keep that in mind. DJI how much you want to bet? Never been known. DJI has never been known to make one of anything. Well, that's why they the have new the new transmission system. O three lowers the latency. Yeah, even even more than well, OcuSync three. OK, you're not getting the dropouts. Here's the other thing that's starting to come. Which people were complaining have, about. Well, they, they, they were complaining the about it. For that too, um, Lawrence. Yeah, but look at what else it does, Herman. Mm -hmm. So when you finally go way too far behind too many, though, it doesn't immediately return. It waits and then it rises up and using its senses works its way back home. The other nice thing is when you have the goggles on, okay, Lawrence, you, you know, you can become disorientated. Like, where am I? Yeah. How do I get back to where I started from? Yeah. There's yeah. an H that it, floats it, in the screen. It has happened, yeah. So when you turn your head, you know, when you turn the bird and you see that H, that's home. You, you know that's home, there. yes. Okay? So these are all little features built in. Why? Look, they don't want you sending back the bird every other week because you broke it. That you well, know, people go, people say, "Oh, that's where the that's where their profit is." And no, because if too many birds get destroyed day one, mm -hmm. the word gets out and they don't get the sales. Right, they right. want you they to be happy. Come on, a company wants you to be happy with their product because you help them sell the product. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brandon Ariel says with the differences between um, like talking about a car and a motorcycle. Oh, yeah. You know what it's like? It's like talking between a motorcycle and a trike. Okay. 
It's you the know first, there are two wheelers out there who look in disdain at those on a trike. It's the right? first drone out there that is an actual crossover. It, it, it's a hybrid. It, it does everything. It has GPS, it has acro mode, and it has something almost called like stabilized mode or horizon mode yeah. where you'll in, be able to in do certain mode. turns and stuff, but if you take your hand off the throttle, she's going to level off. Yes. Well, yeah. Lawrence, if you listen to Tom talk about this thing, it reminds me of once that this guy used to work for. He says to me, he goes, this is the difference between a car and an automobile. And I said, well, what's the difference? He goes, well, well, in a car, you adjust to the car. In an automobile, it adjusts to you. You mean the motorcycle, <laughs> yeah. So now, with this thing here, with this drone, it's sitting, when I, from what I'm looking at with it, and what I, I've seen a few videos like Tom was talking, and I see this, like what Tom was saying, how this is for him. I see this being for any of the guys who are into the camera drones, seriously into the camera drones, that wants to make that move over. And even for somebody who's getting into it for the first time, who knows DJI and says, oh, DJI, DJI, and they wanted to get into it, even that might attract them too. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I mean, it, it's easy to bust on it, but... Um, why do we buy cameras? It's easy. It's it's, it's it's something that um, there's use for this. There's yeah. there's a lot of use things for this. Uh, I, so exactly like what I said before about Skydio. It's another tool that small filmmaker can put. It's a tool. Yes, yes it's it a is. Tool. It's a tool. Yeah, and we it's see a lot money. of our friends online using that tool very effectively. Right. We have FPV flyers who are flying. You know, doing those aerial acrobatics yeah, and the second. flips and the barrel rolls and all of that. And you have FPV flyers who are doing these smooth runs over ridge lines and over That's breaking what waves. I like to and, do. I like the and cruise. you know what? They're they're both FPV flyers. Yep. Agreed. But they fly differently. They have different styles. Why do we go out and buy another DSL camera when we have a DSL camera? Okay. Because it offers us the newer camera offers us more features. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now it doesn't make us necessarily a better photographer. That has to come with experience. Mm -hmm. You don't become a better flyer immediately because you bought this drone. Well, Tom, no, I can you answer. Gotta, you got to. I can answer this for you, and I could probably answer it for anyone else who brought the DJI FPV bird. And people ask me why did I start flying FPV. And the answer was very simple. You get tired of flying in a straight line. Well, yeah, you, you know what? You get the tired. The fact that you can bank yeah. and climb and dive adds to your creativity as a YouTube a creator or as a videographer or as a photographer. I know people that are going to be taking snapshots, diving buildings. I well, uh, I'm going to give you, I'll give you an analogy. Okay. Something we should all relate to. Crayola. We all started. We all started with the box of eight and thought we were king of the hill when we got the box Until of sixteen. Got to 64. But weren't we elitist when we got to sixty-four with the sharpener? I yes. mean, yeah. yeah, okay. How many browns can you have in a box? But they weren't all brown. This one was burnt Sierra. Okay, it, it, it it's orange. It, it's yes. our natural yes. need to to build a better mouse trap. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to say I, I caught a bigger mouse. So. I, this is right up, dude. I'm a geek. I'm a photographer, and I have a passion for aviation. Tell me, I wasn't destined to purchase this, right? Oh, so, yeah. you know, you said you know, it, it, to be honest, That's drones funny. alone. I feel bad that my uncle has passed because I got him into his hobby of HO gauge trains, right? You mm -hmm. know, which I still have. I have thousands of dollars of engines and cars i used to do custom jobs that's how much i was into it i even had a small spread in people magazine article was that big but it was me doing a little interview at the time but right. i wish today he was alive to see drones because he gave me my first 35 millimeter camera mm -hmm. okay yeah. and he yeah. comes from the time those of you who don't know 35 millimeter but he comes from a time where don't baby you had to unroll it in a dark room back into its chamber and take it out and develop these pictures yourself or you had to pay someone to develop them well yeah i did a lot of darkroom work a lot of chemicals yes right? yes yes. but then realize we're talking about the same thing he realized 
when when I went from the chemical dark room and and I got my hands on that first Nikon D1 and then we were using we were already using Photoshop because Photoshop came out 13 years before that right so uh that D1 I wasn't going to a chemical dark room I, I was going in Photoshop and then mm-hmm. then later Lightroom came out. And what did the film shooters say? Oh, you're not a purist. Look at you changing the image. Yeah. And dude, I changed images in a chemical dark room. Mm-hmm. I burnt. Okay. You know, I dodged. I did all of those things. Right. That I would do in in Photoshop and then later in Lightroom. But the purists would say, oh, you're not a real photographer. And Photoshop, Tom, was. Look, I'm not a real FPV pilot. I will agree with you. I don't consider myself. I am first and foremost a photographer. And this is going to give me another tool in the bag. I plan, you know, I plan on going out with the, uh, I'll bring out the Mavic Air 2. Mm -hmm. And I'll bring out this. Tell me that's not a neat little package to go out yes. and travel and, with, and, right? And convenient. And not only that, I imagine I'm going to get footage that I'm going to want to meld the two of them together. We'll you know, I I'm going to, I'm going to look recovery. for a package. I was to- pointing out to Recovery One. What DJI did was, mm. excuse me, they've taken the world of FPV and camera drones and and combined them. And and there are there are videos out there with FPV pilots. Who combine their footage right, with camera Girl. drone? Yeah, Lost Girl and, said and the same that thing. was the main reason yeah. I started flying FPV to be able to combine the footage. Yes, so Laura, combine the footage. I said to you, with the way DJI came out with this, it's almost as if they're trying. Grant to Ariel says the it's world. now a sixty-three pack. They had <laughs> just changed the whole world with this. Yeah, Lost. Lo- yeah, Lost Girl. I I agree. You know, it, it becomes such more. But I, I, I've been saying this over the weeks, right? I'm one of those guys, even though my Z6 has this beautiful uh, millions of pixels on the, on, the, on, on the screen on the back, I still put my eye up to the viewfinder. Why? I want that immersive. I want to be in there because that's when I can compose best. Okay. Right. And I think, you know, I, I, I've noticed it over the years flying uh, these camera drone platforms using a flat screen. You know, uh, Herman, I had that hood, too. You know, the hoodman with the extra hoodman on top of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then you lift your head up and you're blind because the sun just, uh, you know, uh, completely shut down your, That's your true. pupils. Or in right? the summer, you start sweating. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And then you're lost in there. Uh, or one of your friends takes a magic hey, marker man. to the rim and then you come out with the line around your face. But look, I still couldn't get my satisfaction in composing that way. When people look at my screen, they'll see I have grids and diagonals man. turned on because I'm always Matt looking at the various ways to compose. And I think with these, with these, with this DJI goggle solution, you're fully immersed in there. And as a photographer, videographer, cinematographer, you're more able to frame <laughs> Those shots you're looking for. Uh, how many times we came over that ridge and, or, or, or following that train? And, oh, and hey, yeah. Ray, and Let's only go, Ray. to say when we finally saw the images on the big screen, <laughs> hey, I wish I would have angled that just a little bit differently. I do that because, now. because of now. All, all the distractions out there that you have, it's hard. But now when you have those goggles on, you know whether you're getting that right angle or not because you don't have those external distractions taking you away from that screen. Exactly. Okay? You're, you're 100% right about that. You see and the, I already told my wife she's Big my Matt VO. Put, so. He says, I, I'm, I'm in the mix, but I believe new camera drone pilots um, should stay away from this drone. I agree uh, with that one. I don't know. I don't know. This is for intermediate to advanced. No, if not you... no, not the most. Okay, but hold on, out. Tom. Hold on, Tom. Yeah. We we can agree to di- to disagree, but what I want to say is, for a beginner pilot, he would not learn. I don't think a beginner pilot wants to pay drone. two thousand dollars. Okay, when all is said and done. So stay with right. a mini, guys. 500 yeah. bucks, yeah. you're good to go. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you there, but nothing stopped. They built this bird, and I'll tell you, 
They built this bird for that person too, because in normal mode and in the first sports mode, you're doing nothing but flying a Mavic. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just true. a Mavic that tends to lean a little this way or that way. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. <laughs> it's not until you get to it's sport mode to two and sport mode that three mode that you say, Hey, I don't want you traveling at 80 something miles an hour. You're brand new, but that's not until you get down there. And again, the fail safe says you can pull that manual trigger, but you're not really in manual until you then go, and believe me, if you don't know what you're doing and you got through switching to manual and, okay, through the goggles set up full manual and you crash your bird and it looks like that assassin. I just think the camera drone guys, if you go with that one, the camera drone guy, Ray, you, you got to bring down your drone. levels, Ray. You got to bring down your levels. Flying a camera drone for so long, you can make a mistake and take your hand off those sticks and that bird going to come down on you. But this one, it won't, Ray. This it one, it won't. The sticks because, are centered. No, the sticks are centered. because the if you sticks, take the screw, you unloose the no, screw. No, no, Ray. Stick. Okay, but Ray, we're talking I about the it. idiot factor here, Ray. Exactly. If you if you switch into manual mode, if you go into the goggles and switch them, okay, to full manual, and then you remove the back uh, uh, grip and, and you screw, make yeah. the two screw changes and you crash your drone. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility of that. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. okay. That's all, right. all yeah. I'm saying. All right, yeah. Take yeah. responsibility. 100%. Yep. If you go through uh, all that, yeah. Hey, Big Matt, I imagine there'll be a few uh, available for sale soon from those New York flyers <laughs> that should not have them. Okay? Uh, just, just keep your ear close. There's probably a few people that might sell. But again, we've said that about some of these other drones too. True. Okay? You know, the real thing comes... An idiot is an idiot is an idiot. You can't do anything about that, okay? Uh, if somebody's going to go out and crash their car right out of a showroom, you've seen because it. they bought, you've bought seen it. a Porsche and right away went into racetrack. Mode, Lamborghini, seven gears. Never drove a car with seven gears before, and they make it a block and a half away, and they hit Look, something. that's a car, by the way, and I can tell you firsthand, you can drive that car in, in first gear up to 60 miles an hour. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> now, now you pull out of a showroom floor and hit that gas and that rear wheel drive supercar. Okay. Swerves out from under you mm -hmm. and you hit a light pole and get squirrely. I do not believe they go back and they blame the dealership. No. Okay. No, they don't. You So you can't go and blame DJI. Look, you can go out Ray right now. Money is the only factor, right? You can mm. go right out right now and buy a Nikon D6 for $7,000. Does it take a great image? Not without a great photographer. You're yeah, right. Okay? Right. I, so, I agree with so, that. So, you know, if you got the money and want to drop too, too large on this and it's your first run, God bless you. Yeah. You'd be a lot smarter to buy yourself a, a Mini mm -hmm. and see if this is really for you. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, huh, Tom? I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just worried about the cars on the Van Wick. All I got to let you know is when I'm headed upstate, I might be taking a different route, maybe not going past <laughs> Flushing RC Field. That's all I'm saying. Maybe how about the buildings downtown? How about maybe. the buildings downtown and the clock and all that stuff like that? You, know, how you about see, that? Ray, I love all those images, but you never see me give a thumbs up because... Until the current career changes, okay? Uh, I love all that stuff, but again, I, I can't be the drone police, so. Well, just like they have the international that group, Freedom Drones, which is a group overseas. Now, you can click like in that group because overseas, a lot of those shots I click are, like on a lot of that stuff. Are considered It's Tony's legal. site, man. Tony's good people. Okay. Tony's good people. Uh, but you know what? It's uh, it's going to play out where I think this drone will get a lot of traction. If you think about it, DJI didn't spend a boatload of money on marketing. They don't have to. All they got to do is a little leak here, a little leak there. How many hours of DJI FPV video is there right now on YouTube? More than they would pay Imagine what it would cost DJI 
to create that much content. There were okay. channels that have weeks and weeks of video. Or, 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 well, or Billy already has weeks to, to go, it. right? And 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 um, the drone wasn't even released yet. The guys did video after video and never had it. Yeah, but now we have author- <laughs> authoritative resources out there. Very crazy. That can. Oh, okay. there were guys that did videos after video and never had the drone. By the yeah. way, Ray, yeah. ask him, did 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 Herman pull the trigger? No, Herman ain't getting that. Herman, you want to let him down easy? What are you going to do? You going to tell Ray? You going to tell Uncle Ray the story or what? Well, I, I, well, <laughs> I, well, I, well, you know what happened, Ray? He fell off the wagon, dude. Yeah, I, or, did. I fell off. Or that, or that little scooter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to um, actually talk about this here because um, you know we 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 talked about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on, Ralphie. Come on, Ralphie, boy. You know, we I just asked you a simple question. That's a yes or no, bro. I like, are you want me? Da- you want to dance with me? Okay, I dance. What music are we playing? I'll dance. <laughs> it's sitting in the car. I'm just saying. <laughs> I- I'm trying not to add stuff to it. I'm not listening to Tom. Dude, dude, you can't. Come on now. I gotta. What I gotta reach through the lens and smack you. You can't buy this thing without that motion controller. Come on. Exactly. Man. You're gonna exactly. be jonesing. You know you're gonna be jonesing for that trigger, bro. You know. Come on. Yeah. It's got a missile. It's got a missile release button and a trigger. How, how <laughs> really? How, how can you not? Yeah, who sound like the dope dealer? Yeah, I tell you, know. you, see, see what happens. You know what that is? That's what happened when they give it away for free. Dude, dude just remember. I'm just gonna tell you something. That spark was a gateway drug. You know that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They said yeah. they, give, they give it away for free, so you bring his friends. Yeah. Down the next time. Yeah. Uh, let me know if you come a bit further south of 15 High um, Freeway. We can meet up at 138 Mormon, Rock? Mormon Rocks to fly. I gotta write that down. Well, I gotta write that down. Bro. Hey guys, you know how we were talking? We mentioned in a couple of shows earlier uh, last year when when uh, COVID had. Uh, attack the country and, uh, and the world and we yeah. were talking about um how they were using agricultural drones well they have drones for disinfecting but and uh we have here uh state farm arena the home of the atlanta hawks uh, they are bringing in lucent drone tech to uh to the game and um the award-winning state farm mm-hmm. arena the first in the nba to use drones to disinfect so here it is as uh, the arena prepares to host the annual NBA All-Star Festival. They, uh, they're bringing in this company to uh, help them disinfect the, uh, the arena. But what it is, they have to, uh, like I said, this for the All-Star week, uh, weekend here, Saturday coming up. And um, to finish the second half of the 2020-21 uh, season. Uh, State Farm has brought on uh, Lucid Drone uh, to use their D1 disinfectant drone to help sanitize the seven, uh, the seventeen thousand five hundred seat, seat venue. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, this is uh, we talked about this, like I said before, the agricultural drones being used for this. This drone is approximately twenty-seven pounds with a ten-liter tank. And uh, the D1 can cover up to uh, 150,000 square feet in an hour. So it takes the D1 about an hour and a half to disinfect the entire state for Right, where it take a ground crew so much longer, right? Yeah. Again, so, it goes- So they don't have to wipe it about. down? They don't have to wipe it no, down after no, the spray? No, no, no. Okay, I'm just We're asking. We're using yes. that kind of stuff, Ray. Mm-hmm. On apparatus and ambulances, you don't have to wipe it down. You just mm-hmm. go in there. It's an atomizer, okay, and it's electrostatic also. Okay. Okay. So that it sticks to stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, it just, yeah, just doesn't aerosol aerolize and get wasted. It actually, because of the charge of the particles, it right. actually gets attracted to the surfaces. Gotcha. Gotcha. And if anyone is interested, the All-Star Game, like I said, is this weekend. The festivities yeah. are invite only, and it'll only be one day. Yeah. But you, you like we talked about this earlier, Herman, things. right? The efficiency, effectiveness, and, and, and value proposition be, behind using this kind of product. You know, having, having 
uh, individuals go up and down these aisles and spraying the the individual seats. Spraying and wiping, yeah. You know, you got to make sure you got to make sure it was done, and there's got to be supervision, and somebody has to watch them so they don't take shortcuts. And mm-hmm. right with this, you set up the waypoints mm-hmm. and have it do its orbits around the seats, whether but it's a a corkscrew where it's working its way down. You know you can be so much more efficient with it. Um, from in the video, they I believe they had a guy flying the, uh, the drone. Yeah. yeah. But but yeah, think about yeah, it, they, right? You, you, you turn did. around and go to, uh, you know, the Allegiant in Vegas for the Raiders. You're talking about uh, many more seats there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I don't think they figured before COVID, I don't think they figured how to make it rain in that stadium. So <laughs> drones would be the right thing to use, you know, to apply disinfectants. And, mm-hmm. and I see this being used in all arenas. It makes sense. Well, this especially is, when this they see actually, this get out. I'm bringing it back up because I want to point out, this is actually a jump in drones because they were, there was a company that tried using a drone with a hose that was tethered to it. Now, the hose that was tethered to it meant that it could spray and spray and spray until the battery went out. But I like this idea better because, like Herman said, it covers a 17,000 seat stadium in an hour and a half. That's not bad. Yeah, and it's not going to be a single flight. Hey, Ray, it's it's going to be multiple. He was asking about it drying. Only thing I suggest is you don't hold the handrail and lick your hand. No, actually, actually, this stuff, I know what you're saying. Actually, this stuff dries pretty quick. Well, it, yes, it does. It's, it's on contact. Full, on contact. The full, it's charge battery, the full charge battery can cover um, 150,000 square feet. Yeah. Yeah. In an hour. So, so that's that probably two that batteries is. to take to fly that arena. Here's yeah. the guy. And if yeah. you look at the controller, he's using maybe a seven inch tablet here. And. Yeah, but you, you see, what you don't know is what they're showing you is active control on the sticks, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, always that's a good true. thing. That's always a good thing to show the FAA. But from what okay? they said, but this will be th- this AI is already there. Well, from what they claim, they actually use a software that that's designed to not what? run on GPS, and they map yeah. out the stadium. And the drone, pretty much, he's got his hands on the control to make sure nothing haywire Nothing happens, happens right? Yeah. Which you yeah. should do even when you have a waypoint mapped out, intelligent flight. Mm-hmm. Your hands should be at the ready at all times. It's actually requirement with the FAA. In case that thing decides, I'm Fly not away, what, baby. I, what I was programmed to do. Hey, Lost Girl, Hikes, um, anything Mavic Pro or Phantom 5 that you hear, if you don't see a patent for it, more than likely it's just here. So, so, so Mavic, Mavic Pro 3? He, so, yeah. yeah, the Mavic Pro We're 3. We're taking pre-orders. Yeah, yeah. Ray <laughs> actually is handling the cash exchange right now on that, okay? <laughs> wow, but, wait a minute. Is it thundering? Are we supposed to have a thunderstorm? But, but oh, that's a car? Probably wow. a car backfire. Uh, so, but, you know, look, what you... He must have you, Kool-Aid in the tank. What you got to what you got to realize here is there's already been talk about a Mavic pro three. There's, mm. there's no disputing that there's, you know, you got, the, you, you, you got the, you got the gossip, but you also have some what's considered leaks. Here's my yeah. advice to anybody. Don't be waiting for the very next, because you'll never be satisfied because right. once that next comes out, you're going to hear agree. about something even better. And right. Ooh, I maybe should. And, you're never going to get yourself in the air. Can I say well, well, go well, out well, and well. get what interests you right now that's available right now? I mean, I if, right if they now. were saying the Mavic Pro 3 was going to be released in three weeks and it was reliable, we'd be saying that right now. Okay, hold on right. and take a look. Right. I agree okay? with Tom. I have or, to say- or call me or DM me because I got a Mavic 2 for sale then. Okay. But well, that's listen, all I'm saying. I want to. <laughs> I want to mention something also. And a lot of these reviewers don't do this because they want the views on their videos and stuff like this. But nine times out of 10, you should learn to use what you have first. Well, instead of trying to keep up with the Joneses. We've always said, look, here's, here, here, here's, 
a philosophy of a photographer. Mm -hmm. The best camera is the one you have with you. Yes. If you're always waiting for that better one to come, you're going to miss the shot because you, you're not going to be ready. So it's just like, look, why do we have so many iPhone photos now? And not only that, you have a lot of professional museum quality photos that are coming from iPhones. Why? It's not because, you know, anybody can shoot with them. It's because it's a tool that you leverage. Okay. It's a tool you leverage that as a pro photographer, you're still going to compose the shot and frame the shot. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same way you, you turn around. I look at, I, I already have an image of a shot in my head when I'm start to look through that viewfinder before I put my eye up to it. And right. that's what I'm looking you know to realize you, right now. Now that takes some effort. So, you know, here's how you tell a pro with an iPhone. Here's how you tell a pro photographer from a snap shooter. It's very simple. Snap shooter. Got my shot. What does a pro do? A pro comes up and gets a shot like this. Then they get a shot like this. Then they change the angle slightly here. Then they get an angle there. Whenever I take a shot, I'm always composing in the other aspect. Right. Landscape, I'm always going portrait. Back and forth until I realize what I was looking for on the screen. Now, the only image I'm going to show you. Every time you move, you're getting different lighting. Right. The only image I'm going to show you is the one that met my expectations. I'm not going to show you all my mistakes or all the fell short shots. Okay. And that's when you see somebody come up to something and turn it a few different ways. Okay. We're not talking this, doing your selfies <laughs> and, and your duck lips. You know, you. I'm, I'm talking about taking a shot of subjects. Well, and, see, Tom, and that's it right there. You're 100% right. Because a lot of times when I go fly FPV, or with my camera drone, if I have not been to that spot, while everyone's packing out to go fly, Mm -hmm. I'm usually standing here looking around and seeing what angles I can run, which way I could do this. You know, now I'm in FPV, I like cruising. I like yeah. seeing it cruising. Uh, you're Herm. Y'all see me all the time. When I'm I'm facing one way, you already know I'm in the game. Like, I don't have no time. Exactly. I see it's something. Lost in it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Hey, okay. Sean, how are you? What's you know, up, uh, so so Brant says he still flies his hey, Mavic sure. Air. The only re- reason I don't fly the Mavic Air anymore is I don't want to attract any killer hornets because that's mm-hmm. what it sounds like, uh, Brant. <laughs> okay? Boy, yeah, did they get so much you just got to change quieter. out the props on that. Yeah, I tell you, that that it, it's more the tone. Nowadays, it's a Okay? Than the decibel people. level. It's more the Nowadays, tone, it's the killer frequency. bees. Yeah. No, no, killer hornets. About yeah, 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 almost, hornets. Al- almost. What did they say? It's almost eight times the size of a bee. Yes. So, and they prey on bees. That's not yeah, good. Yeah, I've us, seen that already. Yeah, they're not. That's not good for us. We need bees. Okay. Bad enough that man's already destroying the bees. <laughs> this is true. Very, yep. very true. All right. Hey, what's well, up, Sean? Yeah. How are you, Sean? Did you? Uh, we got it, Sean. Sean. Uh, yes, us, he man. got a video. I saw a video. It, it, he's he's. You saw a video of him hitting. I saw the... a thumbnail. Oh, oh I saw okay. a thumbnail. Where's... I was wondering if there a was box. a video of him pushing the purchase button, the buy button, or not. That's what I was wondering. Well, so, Sean... I, I saw a thumbnail, and and Sean has something coming up, which I'm sure because he's always grinding when it comes. We're to... not going to get it inside. Come on, we you know we'll try not to be spoilers, but. <laughs> it was a little hinty hint. Well, yeah, I just you know, I'm wondering. I mean, come on, Sean. I I pulled the trigger. We're trying to get we we we're, we're trying to get uh, Herman to actually press the button. <laughs> he's he's got the cart going right now. But you Sean, I told is, him. Sean, I, I told I him. Feel, what's the sense without the motion? Control, I feel right? like we're watching Deal or No Deal. You know, you, you pick a case and, and it's a low number and then the guy offers you more money and you go, no deal. You know, well, Herman, Herman said, I, I think he's, he's got his hand on the cover. I don't know yet. I'm trying to justify it. <laughs> Sean, so, man, I, Sean, I, I said man, earlier. Listen, Herman, I truly understand that. Uh, Trust th- me, look, the motion controller is a bit weird. I, I saw a, 
I saw a pretty funny uh, one up there. Who did I see it from? It might have been one of you guys. Uh, let me know. But it had uh, it had two RCs and the motion controller. And the first RC said, uh, uh, I think, uh, a thumber. And the next one said a pincher. Oh, I and then with the motion controller, Justin. it said wanker. Yeah, I saw and, that. And I told I Justin. Somebody posted that today. I told Justin I've had years of uh, experience Justin posted with it. wanking. Actually, Justin so this should work it. out very well then. See if I could find it. Yeah, Justin yeah. posted that. I'm trying to see if I can find it right now in the um, beginner FPV group. Well, Sean, I plan on I plan on flying the simulator, mm -hmm. uh, you know, e each evening for for an hour or two uh, before I. Oh, take wait it out a minute! Box, you guys so. have to see this. You know the guy with the broken broken FPV drone, right? What the four well, broken arms? Right, with the legs hanging. Well, the memes have already started. I have to show you this. Really quick, I won't keep it up long because it's on Facebook, but this is they have it next to an at at Star Wars at at. That's what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know if I could bring the picture up anymore. No, were you no, able to bring it in? No, you, yeah, Show I, your can't, screen? I can't zoom in anymore. Oh, I'd have to download it and do that. Okay. But I just thought this was size? interesting, huh? Why it looks small when you, I mean, it's a good, it's a good size picture, you can see it. See that, okay. Sean? I knew you would get that, Sean. <laughs> wait, wait. I want to see how many uh, how many non-discrete photos there are of this under the blankets, having twins. Remember all the shots oh, yeah, from Mavics? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, in I fact, there was remember. a whole family of Mavics. Uh, so you this one's going to be in the family shot. Hey, my uncle, my hunchback uncle from Notre Dame came to visit. Okay. <laughs> 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 You're gonna see all kind of stuff going on. Yes, yes, you are. You definitely yeah, gonna I, see. Yeah, I, you know, look, uh, I agree with you, uh, Stevie. So I know uh, what you added to your cart. So you already gave it up, bro. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's too large. That's what you're gonna wind up. Uh, no, Stevie. I know. Yeah, that's why he's sitting there. You, the sweat on the brow. It, if the beads start to drop down, you know we hit the button, dude. <laughs> now, the thing is, you know, it's your night, Herman. This is the place oh. to do it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is share that screen while you're hitting the button, man. This is the... This is your opportunity. <laughs> oh, look at this. Let's Send me that, that please, Lawrence. Cool. Um, Sean, it was actually on Geeks Bunner. <laughs> I know it was on Geeks Bunner. Sean, it was on Facebook. Let me see. Yeah, to if see I can if find you can it tag him on it Hold or, on. or share I it with him. It's a beginner FPV. Yeah. So Lawrence, huh? I told Tom I live next door to a school. We got a drug free <laughs> zone over here. <laughs> yeah, that'll get you very far. You can't, can't talk to me like that over there. Sean, yeah. I'll download it and send it to you right now. That's why you got to turn down those speakers, only use the headset, okay? <laughs> you don't want the neighbors hearing the wrong thing here. Like we're we're running a uh you know a meth lab, okay? Oh well, I'm quite sure somebody's running something. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's not you and they're not in your building and blowing it up, okay? So <laughs> Hey, Sean, I'm sending it to you right now. I just have to go through my file. My well, pictures uh, well, Herman, I'm going to say we're going to have to end the stream soon because I got about another 14 hours worth of uh, FPV unboxing. Video. <laughs> unboxing <laughs> <video to> watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, like I said, they're out there. I mean, yo, everybody's going to jump on this. Yeah, and I think they so, too. And I, coming, right? that's, I, I think, you know. Hey, Sean, like I adding, just sent it to you. In Messenger. By adding so many uh, progressive modes into this, mm -hmm. they did open this bird up to a much wider right. audience. Yeah, it's like tuning spots within those same modes that... And then you can tune the bird to your flight characteristics also. So that's why I, I, I like Billy. Billy's, you know, starting to cover some of that. You know, uh, he'll get into his settings, the expo setting sensitivity. One thing I have know. to say, Tom, that I enjoyed about Ken Dono's um, video last night, watching him fly. And, and it is, the bird is very heavy. And the yeah. prop wash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 
that I spoke to Eddie too. Coming out of coming out yeah. of um, yeah. certain maneuvers mm -hmm. can yeah. be changed and or edited by adjusting the to power ratio and or props. Yeah, to a degree, right? Okay. Yes. And, and like yes. anything else, this can so be I just wanted to point also. that out. But what you don't get with this, what you don't, what you don't get saddled with is the amount of tuning you would have to do that you're used to, uh, yeah. Lawrence. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I can fly this out of the it's box. It's out the box. It's but now box I can flyable. I can sweeten it a little, just like I've done with my other drones, changing my gimbal settings, changing my yaw, uh, you know, changing those expo and sensitivity mm -hmm. settings. You can do the same thing here, but you don't have to. Now, will you have the same amount of pleasure from it? Probably not. But as you get more adept, you'll learn those things and you'll want to tune it. Okay. You know, Billy's put it out there that, hey, you know, when he first flew this, he, he, didn't, he didn't like it that much. But once, once he, he realized he was, outside, once, he was outside of his comfort zone. But once he realized he could make some of those adjustments, he was able to, to tune it to the way he likes to fly. Hey, Herm, you okay? see what Matt put? Right. And, and that's what makes it such an adaptable bird, which I keep calling a crossover. <laughs> yeah, that sun hood <laughs> goes away, Herman. <laughs> OK, oh, yeah. we're just going to look like a bunch what? of loose headed aliens sitting on a park bench. OK, Tom, with Tom, our antennas sticking out. Tom, believe it or somebody not. Somebody falls off the bench. Yeah, Tom, exactly. Believe it or not, <laughs> it doesn't happen as much. When you first start, no, oh, I know do, you're I gonna know. do the wiggly dance. You're I know. Do the Stevie Wonder. Please, we watch how while, many guys, how many guys at uh, Flushing RC. You know, you get the 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 sharks and the jets. You know, West mm -hmm. Side Story. The FPV flyers are over there. Yeah. And and the camera drone flyers are oblivious, and they're over on this corner. Right. And all you hear is cursing from the FPV flies. Because they're ah, freaking camera. Out. They're blasting me out. Uh, uh -huh. You know so. <laughs> yeah. so this is why I like the desert, okay? Because I can go out to the desert, and I don't think the scorpion or the coyote is going to complain. So, well, you know, you I ask maybe. Well, and the other thing is, I don't have as many uh, obstacles to uh, screw up my signal out there. So, but oh, you really have uh, well, listen, Yeah, that's I'm going to have a plan. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to fly that uh, hey, lost, water park. Lost girl, um, most definitely. If you plan on getting filters, get them. You will see a world of a difference. Everyone on the panel. Yeah. Here, everyone yeah. on the panel here uses filters. Well, I'll tell you. Here's the biggest benefit. So, so you need a good set of ND filters. And you should get a range of them. Uh, now, there are some yes. variable filters out there, but make sure you get a quality one. A variable filter is one you put on and you don't take off, okay? And and there's usually two different ranges. You'll, you usually have a range that goes from four or eight up to 32. And then the other range would be from 32 up to like 256. Now, the real reason you want to put them on your drone is because you want to control your frame rate, your shutter speed, or known as the 180 rule, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, oh, shoot. then your shutter speed should be 1 60th of a second. And the best way to achieve that is by putting an ND filter on, okay? Right so you can maintain that 1 60th of a second, but control the light. So this way... You don't get too many blowouts in the highlights or too many, you know, muddiness and noise in your shadows. It cleans up it, somewhat it, it, shading. Clean up the video and photos. So, so that. Lost Girls, go up on YouTube and just search for using ND filters on drones. And I bet you, you're going to come up with a slew of stuff up there. Billy's yeah. covered stuff, uh, uh, Flight Path, and Aldrin Astasio, great cool guy. Video. He's gone over stuff. Of course, they all have affiliate links in their comments, the way you can go buy them. Uh, Polar Pro, probably top of the stack, most expensive. Okay, Freewell is, is a good provider. Um, but get a set, get a decent set. If you go for the variable, expect to pay a little more and don't go cheap. 
Okay. Yeah, because a lot it of is another use, piece of glass. A lot of third parties, Tom. You have to mention a lot, a lot of crappy third, third parties, parties that sell slow crap boat out from there, sell yeah. garbage glass, and your filter is only as good as the glass. It's yeah, on. your image is only going to be as good as the glass, right? Yes. So, uh, with a, with a you set. know, look, I'll, I'll give yeah. you a quick, I'll give you a quick rundown on my major filter use. Fours are normally my early sunrise sunset. Late sunset, I'll use a four. My eights are later on during that golden hour. My sixteens and and eights I'm going to use on overcast days. Okay, yeah, this is very right. bill filter right there. And sixteens, sixteens I'm going to go for bright sunny days. Uh, but if I'm in the southwest of the U.S. or that thirty two, okay, huh? or it's uh, so Lost bright. Girls? She's in Texas. A thirty-two. Lost girls, I'm gonna. I might be up to a thirty-two at that. Yeah, point. a thirty-two. And and well, again, again, you know what the nice thing about the variable <laughs> is? On the variable, you can dial it in. That's so, what Herman was just showing right. Annette on that's his what Herman was showing. That's a variable that you don't have to take this lens off and put. Yeah, but you got to be careful with them too. If you turn it into the sun, because now you mess up your shot. So the yeah. variables well, could be yeah. tricky. They could be yeah, tricky. The variables can add a tricky. color cast sometimes yeah. if they're not. Look in in standard photography, we've had that problem also. Mm -hmm. You want to pay for good variable ND. You're going to pay about three and change or more. You want to go cheap? You can get one for eighty to hundred bucks. But what you'll find is the eighty to hundred bucks is going to have color cast in it. Yeah, and yep. sometimes you'll get banding. Listen, Lost Girls, that. I notice she says she's looking in a free will. Free will good. makes your budget brand, and free will also makes a get medium the level brand. I would quality. go with the medium level brand because free will, and I personal experience, I brought free, free will filters for my Phantom standard. And then I went and brought free wells the next level up okay. and the glass was completely different. I don't suggest you buy the bottom end free wells if no. you're looking into it and you will have a lot of options, but free well, if you're paying, if it's a set of four, I'd say spend 30, 30, 30, 40 dollars. Uh, I think you're paying more well, than that. You're paying more than that. Yeah. 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 And I'll tell yeah. you what. Okay. More than that. Oh yeah. The second cost you about almost two and some change. For a set of four yeah. real ones. So, so with free well, you're going to get two different levels. Right. Uh, that's what pro I, that's what and non-pro level glass. Cinematic okay. or the other one. Yeah. yeah. Look, uh, they have a good set. Uh, it's called the VND set. Uh, you know, that's a variable set. But look for a quality set where you don't have to buy eight filters. Because I got to be honest with you. I, They're good for that. You're not going to use a 256 today. You barely use a 64, okay? Barely use not a 32. Use an MD yeah. 1000 mm -hmm. unless yeah. you got a skill set. Right. I, I'll tell you how I use. Look, the as, only as, as, as a as a because it came with it. As a conventional photographer, I'm going to use an ND filter when I'm shooting waterfalls, okay? Why? Because I want to get everything sharp in the shot except for that cascading water. I want to get that dreaminess. So as so I want to be at one five point six to like a thousand. Well, uh, so look, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot okay at an f eight, okay, maybe okay, but I don't want to really shoot more than that because you get some, you you get something that happens when you get into higher higher apertures, which means smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. It's diffraction. It's the way yeah, the light bends, yeah. right? So I want to stay around an F8, maybe no higher than an F11. I might put an ND uh, thousand on there and leave the shutter open for 10 seconds. Right. At midday. Right. At midday. On a, tri right? on a tripod. Right. Yeah. Five seconds. Right. On a tripod. Seconds. On a tripod. Yes. And, <laughs> and a very good tripod, by yes, the way. Sir. So mm -hmm. it's not moving. And maybe, mm -hmm. maybe my camera bag hanging from its center post for the weight, and yes. the rocks. Did you use it? Would you use a would you use a trigger, Tom? Or yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. I go carbon fiber because you get better stability. Okay. Lightweight. It's more expensive, but it's yeah. more rigid and it's more stable. But the thing is that you have to remember is ND filters are a tool. It's another tool in your bag. Now, the best way to use them is put them on your drone, hold your drone, okay, 
face it in the direction you plan on filming most in, get your adjustment to where now you can maintain that shutter speed you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's the 180. Remember the 180 rule. You want to shoot 24 frames per second, then around 150th, uh, 30 frames a second, 160th. You want to shoot 4K 60, then you should be at 120th. It's like always going to go that 180, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 160th of a second. For Now, here's something most people don't know. You don't want to go a faster shutter speed. And the reason you don't want to go faster shutter speed is because it doesn't look as natural to us. It, 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 it looks too jumpy without real. And, and it could be steady as hell. There's too many frames being captured. You want a bit of, and if there's any action in the shot, it's not going to feel right to you. So you want to slow down your shutter. And that's why they're saying the 180 rule. But you could go even a little slower if you want. You could go, you know, to a 30th of a second on uh, shooting the uh, 30 frames a second. You'll just get a little more blur in the motion of the stuff that's moving. And if you're shooting like uh, a bridge with traffic coming across it, you might want to add that little extra blur and go a little slower. Now so you get those little streaks in the light and stuff yeah, like that. Exactly, yeah. especially if you're doing those night shots, right? Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. But <laughs> you want to you want to turn around and and you want to adjust it or put the right ND filter on for the right time of day and for the right purpose you're shooting. Get a set of four. You can start out on the lower end of the spectrum from four exactly. up to 32. And I, I'd be honest with you, I'd be hard pressed to think you need more than that for a while. Tom, you need to tell her also she need to watch her white balance as well. Yeah, but you the know? white balance, remember now, you wonder why some of us shoot in D-log and mm -hmm. why some still photographers shoot in RAW. Because we want that control after the fact. I don't want yes. to have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Now, here's one thing I would highly recommend. It's easy to shoot in auto everything. It's easy to shoot in auto white balance. The only problem with auto white balance is it's automatic. It'll wind up changing on you. So every time you turn that drone, it's going to change. Yep. The sun goes behind the cloud. You just went from 5,500 Kelvin <laughs> to 6,500 Kelvin. Exactly, in a and second. And yeah. you go, what just happened? And that shadow that can follow you across the field. Yeah, you, you right. You have to turn around and you set up and go, I'm going to shoot this with daylight balance. So I'm going to shoot yeah. this. I want it a little warmer. Right. So I'm going to go cloudy. I want it really, really warm. I'm going to go shade. You know, so start to figure out the different settings. Uh, in time, yeah. in time, you'll get it, and you can always come oh, yeah. practice, 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 practice. But guess if you, what? If you watch the videos, like Tom said, on ND filters on drones, there's so much information out there. You will be generalized in what you want to do. You know, on a sunny, sunny day with no clouds, you have to use a 32 because there are no clouds. And you'll understand that. You'll know that in on a semi cloudy day, you may use anywhere from a four to eight, depending on how much light yeah, it is depends. coming through. It depends. Yeah. And you know what the great thing that concept. The great thing about drone photography, you know, look, a as a conventional photographer, what are the best times of day for me to photograph? It's always golden hour. Okay. Why? Because I get the dreamiest light during those times right. because of the angle of the sun, right? What's the great about drone photography, especially if you're into like a Jerome Strauss, he, the guy is great with top down photography. OK, mm -hmm. we have a little thing called, you know, top down Tuesdays. Right. Uh, where we throw up a lot of images of top down shots. You know, the best right. time to get a top down shot. Noon. Guess what time photographers don't like to film. It's usually noon. Why? Because of harsh shadows. But now yeah. I'm looking down. Now you want to know the best time? Cloudy days. Because on cloudy days, when I'm looking down, I got a giant soft box above me, right? right? The larger the light source, okay? Diffusion, yeah. You got that diffusion. The larger that source is diffused, 
the smoother. You, you, you the see what she puts? She always tries to bring the white balance down, but sometimes the shadows hurt. If you if you go out on a sunny day and your all your drone has this on a sunny day you set the white balance to sunny day on a cloudy day you set yeah, the white yeah. balance to cloudy day yeah. and you will see the difference trust it me it won't change on you exactly no matter yeah. what you turn the camera it will not I, change I, if you do a video try to stay away from that 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 auto yeah you well it's to, auto yeah, one yeah, in definitely right? where there are a lot of people on Facebook. <laughs> that will tell you I shoot an auto and, and I no, have I shoot a man. With, I have these issues when I turn from here to here, the picture gets all fuzzy. And they it's think it's user. they they, you know they actually saying? think that it may be reception. It's mm -hmm. not. It's because so, the right, white balance I shoot is in three auto. Modes, reception right? issue on your SD card. But what I'm saying is as far as what what Ray is talking about white balance, if you're if you're doing video. You should never have it set on auto. No, yeah. no, it's no. It's agreed. Tough. It's tough. Agreed. Like Continue when I change. shoot, when I shoot conventional photography, I do use three modes. Uh, predominantly, I'm using manual in the studio always. There is no other mode in the studio setting because I have an X-ray color check. I can open it up. I can, mm -hmm. of course, right away. You have all the right lighting balance. and the diffusers. You I have use. Yes. I use continuous lighting in my studio. So what? What I see is what I'm going to get. I can adjust right. for that. When I'm out in the field, I do use manual a lot. But that's not to say I don't use aperture priority or shutter there priority. There you go. That's it. Now, that's it. If, if I want to turn around and, and my focus is going to be shooting that race car at an event, mm -hmm. okay? You I am have going to manual probably settings. Use yes, most shutter, shutter priority. I'm going to priority. use shutter priority. Of course. Because I want to capture the vehicle but I want the background blurred out. Be soft. Be so soft, I'm yes. going to pan with my mm -hmm. camera as I shoot. And with the right shutter speeds, man, I can bring in that blur that yeah. in turn evokes speed. Mm -hmm. A car yeah. photographing a car static. Right. Okay. But you want to see the rim spinning in the shot. You want to see the tires spinning. You want to you know? see that blur in exactly. those elements, but you want the car to be sharp. Otherwise, right. the customer is not paying you for a blurry mm -hmm. car. That's right? the depth of field, right? You want to make sure, I can, like... I can do that shot. I can replicate that shot whether the person's on a bicycle, running a road Or they're jogging or whatever, or yes. It doesn't matter. I, At this point in, in my experience, I can tune those things in. Now, aperture priority, I want to make sure I have a certain amount of bokeh in the background, that blurriness. Yes. I might go to aperture priority. So that my... And your ISO will be set to auto, right? My... ISO, I'm a I'm a hundred or go home kind of guy. <laughs> okay, <I'm right>. <laughs> yeah, so Ray, I'm always gonna and what I mean by that, folks, is I don't always shoot on hundred ISO. Of course not. I'd only be able to shoot with a ton of light. Right. I always shoot with the lowest possible ISO to get the cleanest image. And in a drone, Ray, that's a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, I've shot a lot of, you know, you're talking about DSLR on the Nikon side. I've shot with that D6, okay. At over two hundred thousand ISO, mm -hmm. and I shot at sixty four hundred. Exactly. So, yes. So remember, like for, for things like arson investigation, forensics, right? You might be going into a dark, sooty environment. You still got to get those point of origin burn marks, right? You're mm -hmm. gonna switch that bad boy up. Yeah. And guess 12, what? Maybe get twelve thousand. That, that's Never why know. you're paying six to seven thousand dollars for that camera body. Because the sensor, I ain't paying that so, much, but I got what you mean. <laughs> yeah, the sensor is so damn sensitive. Forty-eight megapixels on this baby, so I know yeah. exactly what you yeah. mean. Yeah, but the sensor's ability and the discreteness of that sensor to handle light is what's key. You know, look, you gotta use the tools in your toolbox, mm -hmm. which means you gotta learn them. You and learn, you learn them yes. slowly but surely. But I'm I'm one of those creatures where. I got to see it. Your hands I got to put my hands work. on it, right? Yeah, smell and it. Tell me, tell me. Yeah. I, I'm just glad I, I, you know, I wasn't born too early because I'm enjoying the heck out of YouTube. Okay. Because mm -hmm. no matter, look. I, oh, yeah. Five more years or six more years earlier, you'd be like, huh? <laughs> well, in, in six more years, you just plug it right in here yeah. and you ingest all that knowledge. Okay. But, but right now, here's my suggestion to all of these be a sponge. Go up on mm -hmm. YouTube. But oh, yeah. uh, again, grain of salt, people. 
follow people that are reputable. Hey, Northeast okay? Trones. How are you, brother? Just like in Tony, this Tony Norfolk and his wife, I stay watching them. And stay out of auto settings. Learn to use manual and you'll learn to appreciate your drone. Everyone, yeah. I said it several times, everyone on this panel uses filters. Everyone on this panel shoots in manual. And you can go to any one of our channels and look at the, not my FPV stuff, but the camera drone videos. And you'll see the difference between using filters and, and not using filters and shooting in auto and not shooting in auto. Yeah, and, and again, Look, nobody's saying you got to shoot D-log day one, but you got to learn how to color grade. Right. But that's another tool. Now, if you want straight out of the drone, I want to put stuff up on YouTube and Facebook and all that. Shoot JPEG, yeah. And then you're going to shoot JPEG for your stills and you're going to shoot standard on your video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Uh, you know, you got Cinelike and D-log, depending on the drone. The Mavic 2, right. The Mavic okay. 2, yes. And then you need, if, if you're not adept at at color grading, uh, then you got to go find yourself a couple of LUTs or lookup tables, you know, luminosity lookup tables to apply to your in. And all this gets unwieldy, right? So I'm not saying everything you do, yeah, have it, to do, you have do to. as a purist, Mr. otherwise Bro, we're going to put down on you. Whatever works for you. Well, and you just tell us you use Tom, manual. Shoot Tom, in auto, get a great shot. Tell us your shot in manual. We'll believe But it. a lot of people shoot with what the drone does out the box. Yeah. And yeah. that's why a lot of people get caught in with the... Um, with Overexposure the, with the, and all that stuff. Well, well, not so much with that, but what we, we, you what you started with, with the mentioning of the uh, auto... Oh, white right balance. Yeah, white balance, yes. And yes. guys think that I'm going to set everything in auto and let the camera do it. And when you start getting into video... I will tell you the drone is in the sky. You're up there to your battery it tells you you get a low battery warning and then you're coming down. So yeah. try, try to keep in, in the back of your head that you cannot leave that in, in auto. That you everything else, you fly auto all you want. But well, the, the white balance in auto is gonna yeah. mess up your video. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, especially guys, especially if you're gonna do you wanna do a 360, right? You want to do a 360 image and you want it to look like it was one continuous shot, then you got to go manual white balance. Here's another one I'll tell you. You better have your camera switched on manual white balance is, if I'm not mistaken, asteroid mode. If you've ever mm -hmm. seen an asteroid mode done where it takes off and it gives you that tiny planet, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. almost like, yeah. But it's what changing. you'll see is you'll see banding in the sky Mm -hmm. because it kept on every time it turned around and take another yeah, yes. three shots yeah. it the changing balance the changing. white balance that's yeah. right <laughs> okay so look there's a lot to comprehend here and the first and, thing we want you to in. do the first thing we want you to do is to make sure you can control your 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 bird properly your aircraft and and so focus on that right it's just like uh, my analogy would be playing hockey uh, no you can't play can hockey very well if you can't skate. In fact, True. you can't play hockey. True. Okay, <laughs> so learn how to skate first. Learn how to maneuver the aircraft. Learn how to work the controls. You know, because when you start, it's not like an SLR, a top end SLR, where all my controls are on the outside. Some of these things you have to be able to change will wind up being things you got to menu dive. And when you're flying, you don't want to do a lot of menu diving. So that's also why DJI gave you some function keys. So you can C1, C2. assign some of those functions that you get better at to some of those function keys. So now Earn. you don't have to menu. Earn. That's why I love the Phantom. You got three sets you can set up on the Phantom. Presets, yeah. bang, yeah. bang, bang, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. like Tom said, you want to be digging all the air time for like you missed the shot. Trying to dig deep into trying to find settings. Yeah, or worse yet, if you're flying, right, Ray? If we're on the ground and we got our camera set up on a tripod and we got a menu dive, yeah, we could miss the shot. If we're yeah. in the sky, we could crash into a tree. Exactly. Okay. So we got two, 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 two cons going on. Yeah. And, and again, I said that, you know, we're talking about, oh, it's a rule. You should do it this way, rule. The, you know what? Here's the philosophy of a pro photographer. Learn the rules so hey, you can Corey. learn where you can break them. Right. You know, learn the rule, learn the rules of composition, learn the rules of of thirds, learn mm -hmm. uh, converging lines, learn 
how to work with diagonals, you know, in your shots. When you take an image, you have, you know, the bridge coming down at you in a perspective or like me with railroad tracks going off into infinity, right? Mm -hmm. Because what it does is you're getting your viewer to look down those railroad tracks. Okay. When, when you yes. compose an image, think about a tic-tac-toe board and you don't really have to think about it because you could turn on various types of grids that display on your screen. Now, some will say, well, it's too much clutter. As a photographer, I say it helps you compose. It's another tool. Time. Okay. It's another tool. Now, think about a tic-tac-toe board. Where those lines cross, okay, they're called points of interest or crash points. A, a photographer, when, when you center everything in your shot, it gets boring real quick. Mm -hmm. Now, think about this. I can tell a story with the same image two different ways about where I place it on those crash points. Right. So uh, you have somebody running through a, through a frame. Think about it. If I place them, okay, at one of those third lines facing out of the frame, it looks like they're running away from something because two thirds of the frame is empty behind them. But if I show that same runner, running into the frame with one third behind them, but two thirds in front of them, they're running towards something. No, we're not right. doing a Roger style marathon brand. No, no, don't it's worry. Very, don't worry. It's just I ain't a very going good to make, topic. I'm, oh, I'm no, not no, making no. dinner and, and then we, coming back later. To see we do believe each one. But we love one. Roger. Okay. Yeah. Th that's what we're into. We're into the teaching aspect of it. And, and the thing is that you can tell a different story with the same image if you have the yeah. skills it's just where you place things okay i want to it look if i'm shooting birds flying through the sky mm -hmm. i don't want to put the bird right up against the flame uh, against the frame flying out it's going to stress you the viewer mm -hmm. because the bird has nowhere to go so you're going to feel stressed over that image and you're not going to find that image appealing these are just it's not rocket science, they're tricks, okay? They're, they're composition skills. That's don't, all. Be, don't be scared to ask anytime. Ask no, around. Yeah. Like we're, we're doing orbits at, at one point, you know, most people, and, and even myself, you know, would, would think you keep in your mind like you want to keep it center, but it's not necessary. No, hey, yeah. Timeless. It, it's how you frame things. And, and, and again, experiment. You know, Learn these things. Like when you have converging lines, mm -hmm. you're actually bringing somebody through the shot. Okay. That's you what know, I was telling Lawrence. I, I took a picture of this building in Philly. I don't even know the name of the building. And that was the first thing that drew my eyes to that building was the way the windows and the lines of the building lined up. Yes. And I set the drone yeah. right there to get that shot. Yeah. And it was, you know, that it's even with the shots I took with of uh, the Williamsburg Bridge. I always take those shots of the bridge on that angle, that line, those lines. It's something about that bridge with the amount of steel that they use on it. Yeah. I, I, I uh, to go every different way. I was fortunate to win a pano shot, a pano. Uh, well, I got an award from Epson on a pano, panoramic shot I took mm -hmm. uh, from the Manhattan side, okay, along the FDR of the Manhattan and Brooklyn bridges coming into Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. And I took that shot. That was a pano. It was a series a multiple series of shots. And you would think when you're taking a pano that you're going to take those panels in landscape mode. Okay. And overlap them. No, you take award-winning pano shots by taking them in portrait mode and overlapping yeah. them because this way when you finally merge them together you have to crop off the top and the bottom yes if you didn't cleaner. leave yourself enough room it's you just have cleaner. a ribbon of shoreline so this shot actually had both bridges coming over both of my shoulders and converging mm -hmm. into brooklyn and i was fortunate okay. you know i got an award from Mipson on that shot uh you know and and a printer that's sitting over here so you know, it can come in handy sometimes. It's just that these are little tricks you learn. Like I gave one away not too long ago as a wedding photographer. Hey, How do you go through 3,000 shots? 
as I said before, remember how a photographer takes shots? They take multiples until they get the shot they right. want before they move on to something. Edit in reverse. Look at your shots in reverse order from the last one shot to the first. Because usually when the scene changes, that's the shot you were happy with. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to dive too much. To... And the last thing I'll do before we go, your shots are not lying. And the shitty shots don't age and get better. Get rid of it. <laughs> nothing but hard yes. drive yeah, It just takes waste. up room. It waste. takes up room needlessly. So with that, right. guys, I'm probably out of here because I think I can already hear my wife's stomach rumbling. Uh-huh. So you know what? <laughs> that might have been mine all the way, way from where I live. All okay. about to get out of here. <laughs> Let's get this. Yeah. Let's get this. Let's get this drop, guys. Let's get this there you drop. Go. Wednesday night with those guys is sponsored by those, those guys. guys. We appreciate you all for coming. Don't forget to check out my live stream on Sunday nights, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard and, Time. And maybe Stevie and I will be showing our our new acquisitions. Maybe even Herman, but who knows? And and. and before we get out of here, be safe, fly safer. That's all I got to say. And stay safe. All the best to your right. families. Yes, everyone. So, Make sure you guys uh, come back and check us out on Sunday. Well, I don't know what Lawrence is going to be covering, but we'll have some new topics to talk about. Something new and fresh. And a few and, you know, now the DJI is on the back on the back burner now. Everybody's going to enjoy it. I hope everybody flies safe. Uh, Please, don't, out. don't wreck your birds. <laughs> Take your time, get to learn it, enjoy the product, it, baby. Enjoy the product. Hey, three nineteen. And DJ you got carry fresh. Recommend it. <laughs> and you guys, thanks That's for joining us, Ray. Thank you guys for hanging out tonight. <laughs> and you guys in the chat, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. We appreciate you all. Hit that thumbs and up. And I'll see you next time on Phantom Flight One Hundred and One with those guys. <laughs> <laughs>